Hi, this is Eric from the Long Box Review Comic Book Podcast, uh, where you can find at uh, longboxreview.com. Welcome to the show. Uh, today's topic is uh, the Rose City Comic Con that just happened at the time of this recording. Uh, I think a week ago now, if memory serves. But uh, I, I'd like to I'd like to get on the line here and talk about my experience at at the various cons that I get to go to, which aren't too many. And Rose City is one of the primary ones. And to uh, help me do that is uh, uh, Damien Sleepy Reader six six six, who was also at the con, and uh, we got to hang out a little bit at the con and and also outside of the con, which was very cool. So uh, welcome, Damien. Hey Eric, great to be here again. Yeah, so we both we both went to the con, uh, my third time going, um, and basically my third time going to a con with some slight other things, a few other things I went to that were kind of like cons in the past. So I still feel like I'm fairly fresh to the convention going experience. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, uh, oh wait, before I, before I get into the next thing, um, uh, remind the folks where they can, where they can find you on, on YouTube. Yes. So for those who don't know, I have a YouTube channel called sleepy reader six, six, six. So just go on YouTube and type in sleepy reader six, 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 all one word. Um, if you would like to see my, basically my comic book diary, uh, a ver a hodgepodge of different things that I do about comic books, depending on my, how much time and my mood that I have, um, from comic book halls to reviews, to more meandering ponderings about things. Um, so I think if you like, if you like long box review, you might like sleepy reader six, six, six also. I agree. I agree. And, and I'll have, a, of course, I'll have a, a link to Damien's YouTube channel in the show notes uh, to make it easier for you to find uh, Damien's channel. So, Great. so, so yeah, let's get back to uh, what, what we we're just talking about uh, as far as the con, number of cons. So I, I looked this up, Damien, and I, so this year, 2017 was the fourth time that I went to Rose City Comic Con. Uh huh. And uh, so that's interesting. So you said that this is your third third time my third time yes okay and i've gone i've gone three years in a row okay and the fir first year i just dipped my toes in by going sunday afternoon right i think i think we i mean i, I i'm trying to remember the timeline in which we started uh conversing and and doing stuff together over the interwebs um i did we meet that first time that you were there i think maybe we tried to but we couldn't make the schedule work out or yeah, I don't recall if I knew that you were there that time. Okay, okay. But, um, then, but then the next year, the following year. But then the year, next year, we definitely um, hooked up and, and Matt um, Wednesday Serial was there too. And we did, we were on one of your podcasts, which yes. was a really fun one. That was. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think as I can't remember how long it's been since I've hooked up with you on your podcast. And then before that, on live hangouts with... Um, with Travis Longfellow thoughts, mm -hmm. but, but I think that last year was the first time we met up at a con. Okay. And so what you, you, so, okay, let's, 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 let's talk about uh, this year's. Um, so I, I came out the th Thursday night before the con right. starts. So Driving is, through smoke and fires. Yeah, exactly. I was just going <laughs> to say that. Um, which was interesting because a, a normal and normally uh, six to seven hour drive for me to get to Portland, the Portland area, um, is is uh, or was was extended by a good hour, hour and a half because of all of the the fires here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, basically, where I live, we're just we were surrounded like in a almost a C formation. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, yeah, it was it was pretty bad. It, the the smoke where I lived was, was really really thick, and it was really starting to uh, affect me. You know, I I could feel it. You know, that gunk that you you're breathing in all the time. Yeah, yeah, you um, really. And and so I uh, we decided to well we didn't decide it was decided for us we could not take the 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 normal route from our from our home to Portland because. Uh, I eighty four, which is the northern one of the northernmost freeways going east west in Oregon, was closed. Uh, uh, right as you, as you approached Portland, and so you, we, I, I couldn't go that way. Right, we had a an unusual. I mean, it's kind of 
well, not normal, but it's much more expected for wildfires out by where you are, I think. Mm -hmm. The wildfire in the Columbia Gorge was caused by humans and, yeah. and <laughs> been a lot of upset about that here. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I heard about that. So the gorge, the Columbia Gorge, which is this huge kind of scenic area, is up in flames because of some fireworks. Mm -hmm. But um, but anyway, so you were and, and you were bringing a whole family with you, so that you know, with two kids, yeah. so that must have made that extra harrowing, or harrowing might be the wrong word, but extra nerve nerve wracking a little bit to well, not, no, bring not your whole really. family along through the fires. <laughs> Well, you know, it just, uh, the, just the uncertainty of it, because we were going a different, a different route. Like I said, uh, we, I'd never driven the highway that we took through Washington before we cut down. We finally made it over. Uh, we went through about central Washington and then, uh, hit I five and then went, went down South to, to Portland. Um, I, like I said, I, I had never gone that way and it was also, right. uh, we could not leave until the girls got out of school. And so it was going to be a long night anyway. And then on top of that, like I said, it took another hour, hour and a half. We had a little, a little uh, issue about taking the wrong turn at uh -huh. Albuquerque, uh, a.k.a. Yakima, Washington. <laughs> <laughs> and so that, that slowed us down a little bit too. Right. But, but we finally made it. I think it was between 1130 and midnight when we finally made it to the hotel uh, that we had uh, booked for the con. But uh, And then, you know, we got up. We got up fairly early because this is this this year, 2017, Rose City Comic Con ex, uh, expanded to three days. Right, that's part of the big big difference that this year. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I want to get into that uh, in a little bit, Damian, because I want to get your your take on this this one day addition to the con. But uh, but we got up pretty early because when we had ordered our tickets for the con. I, I, I got them through email, which means basically I got a code, a, 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 one of those, what do they call, what do they call it? a Q code or the little square things with the pattern on it? Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, one of those. And so, so I, I didn't get the badges sent to me, which means, or which meant that I had to go <laughs> wait <in> online <laughs> early, wait in line and, uh, and, and exchange my, my code for badges, which actually, um, went fairly quickly. Right. I was kind of surprised. So were you one of the first people to show up there? Oh, I, I'm, I, I don't know. Uh, there, there were people ahead of us, but it was, it wasn't like we had to stand there and wait. It was it's funny because, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, they mailed me my badges and I, I kind of ordered at the last minute. Like if you order by today, you'll get your badges mailed to me. And that was maybe August. Or no, maybe it was the end of July or something like that. Oh, and I wow. think you got your tickets before me. Oh, I, I ordered them the day that they went live. <laughs> so why didn't they mail you your badge? Well, something... No, it was a choice. Funny, I, yeah. I, could have, I could have had them uh, mail the badges to me. Uh -huh. uh, but for some reason, I chose, chose to, to just have the email uh -huh. notification and then exchange them. I, I don't know why. I suppose you might have thought, uh, what if you leave your badge in Idaho and have driven all the way to Portland and don't have the badge? <laughs> oh, believe me, even, even though I didn't have the actual badge in hand, <laughs> I, I checked like three or four times that I had packed the, the, the printout uh -huh. of, of the tickets. And I made sure that I had, uh, the PDF that they had sent me right. saved on my phone <laughs> Just in case. So you were doubly sure. Because, well, after traveling all that way, it would it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. Whereas no. I, I to me, it's a ten minute drive at the most <laughs> to the con. So, so if I forgot my badge, I could have just driven back home and got it. <laughs> you know, that is one of the nice things about this con so far. Uh, I'm I'm starting to get a, getting a little concerned about this, but um, as they grow, because this this sort of thing happened in Emerald City. Um, is that you were able to get those bad, those you, cause you got a three day weekend pass, right? Three day weekend pass. And I waited, like I said, to near the end of July before ordering them. Yeah. And, uh, that's amazing that, that, uh, you, you could do that. Uh, you can't do that at Emerald city anymore. Uh, not three day right. passes. Those, those tend to sell out. Like I think the last time that I bought tickets to Emerald city in Seattle, uh, it was within an hour that the weekend passes were gone. Right. 
which and, is and don't crazy. you isn't it get, getting hard to get hotel rooms anywhere yeah. near the con y- yes it's it's now at the point where uh if because because my family and i were talking about this after rose city that we wanted to go back to emerald city because we we skipped emerald city this year yeah uh, for for various reasons not not because of any complaints about it um so much um uh, you know, monetary and other considerations, but, mm-hmm. uh, but we weren't going to skip Rose city because we really like the show. It, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a s- still sort of a small show feel. It still right. has a focus on the comic books, the artists, the writers, the creators, um, uh, not so much the celebrity guests that, uh, seem to be the big draw for comic cons these days. So, uh, we definitely wanted to come to this one, but, uh, Excuse me. I, I've forgotten my point now. Uh, Emerald City. What the, was it? the difficulty of getting hotel rooms. Oh, or yes. Ordering in advance. Yeah. So, issues. so Emerald City maybe add to why you're so careful about this one because <laughs> maybe of a little, attending yeah. the bigger one. Yeah. Well, it's like I said, uh, Emerald City, because it's so hugely popular now. And like I said, the, 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 the weekend passes sell out so quickly and the hotels i think even more so we have we have decided if we go next year to emerald city and i'm haven't quite pulled that trigger yet but i gotta decide soon because tickets are going to go on sale here within two months i think it is wow okay and so uh if we do the plan is the the hour that everything goes live my wife is going to we're going to, we're going to tag team this. My wife is going to get the hotel or I will, but the other person will get the tickets because they sell out so quickly. And my wife has a, a, um, a, uh, preference for the, uh, the hotel that's basically right across the street from the convention center in Uh Seattle. So she's, she really wants that hotel. (laughs) So that's, she's really going to have to be on the ball for that. (laughs) Exactly. But but anyway, I, we're, I, I'm not here to talk about Emerald City Comic Con in Seattle. Yeah, um, Rose City, however, like I said, three day con now. Uh, I you were able to get tickets essentially last minute. I had we had no troubles getting a hotel, even though, well, that's not true. the The hotel that we normally stayed at in the previous three years, for some reason, I could not get uh-huh. a room at. I'm not I'm not sure, or maybe I was trying to save a, a few bucks. By going to okay. another hotel, which is so you were a few more blocks away. You were still at, very close. Yeah, at most it was a few a few blocks away, so it was not a problem, not at all. But uh, but I, but I wanted to to get kind of pick your brain about this this three day, this edition this this third day edition. So it went from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, as opposed to just being a Saturday Sunday show. Did you notice any kind of major differences or uh, did, did, did it make it better because you could, you could kind of plan things out over, you know, span them out over three days and have more time there? What, did, what were your general thoughts about a, a three-day Rose City Comic Con? Well, it caught me by surprise. I just assumed it was going to be two-day like last year. And I, it wasn't till talking to you that I suddenly dawned on me that it was three days because originally I wanted – to invite your family over our house Friday night, but the con was going on Friday night. I didn't even realize that when I first invited you to come over to our house. Ah, okay. Um, and then I was surprised to see that um, Friday night's the latest night, right? I think the events went up to eight or nine. Mm-hmm. Um, and on Saturday, I think they just go to six thirty or so. And on Sunday, they now end at three or three thirty or something like that. Well, Fairly- no, we were we were there till five. Till the five. Show, okay. The show floor closed at five. They might have had like the panels and stuff. The panels. The panels don't go as late on Sunday as they did. Right. Right. So like the first time I went to the con, I arrived at three o'clock on a Sunday afternoon, and saw three panels. Wow. And then left. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's all I did. And then and then the 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 following year, I I did the whole two days. I mean, I was there from the beginning to the end. I think you know with. Because I was with Matt, so I had kind of someone to run around to everything with. So anyway, the, I think that I think I like the two days better than the three days, but that could be fixed by having more comics-related panels. Because it felt like the same number of panels spread out over three days instead of two. Mm-hmm. 
So to see the ones that I I personally was interested in was harder. And and my my family schedule was a little more difficult this year, so I couldn't just hang out the whole time the way I did last year. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's certainly I'm fine with it being a three day event, um, but it did it did change it a little bit for me in that it just felt a little harder to to hit a bunch of panels I wanted to see in a row. And and I'm I think roughly like you, although I think there's a few celebrities you're interested in. Uh, mostly just go because I want to hear creators talk about what they're up to and what they're doing and get a sense of of their creative thoughts, their their approach to their work and everything. Um, so it felt like there were less highlights in terms of that this year than last year, I think because I missed some things. Like I missed almost the entirety of the uh, Gibbons panel. But um, anyway... So I think next year I'll be more prepared for the fact that it's three days. So what did you think of the, the three day issue? Well, I generally, I liked it because it allowed me to um, shuffle around on the show floor a little more uh, than, than I was, have been able to do in the past. Right. I, That's I, a very good point. I didn't notice a difference in like the number of people on in artist alley or the exhibitors area. Uh, it seemed pretty much like the same amount uh, in the convention center that I'm that I uh, had experienced in previous years. So, yeah. like I said, it did allow us to to for us to go to certain panels and still go through the entire show floor. Uh, it, uh, you know, I went to I went to Heroes Con uh, last no two years ago, a year ago, whatever. Whenever whenever I went to Heroes Con, uh, it was two Heroes Cons ago, so last year. Um, and that was, was that a two day show? And, but it was, it was small. It was a small enough show. I mean, a very enjoyable show. I would go back in an instant. Um, but there wasn't as much to see on the show floor there uh-huh. that by Sunday afternoon, I was, I was basically walking the entire show floor again just to make sure I caught everything. But I, you know, I did here at Rose City Sunday at five o'clock when they, after they announced, Hey, we're done. Rose City is done. Uh, be sure to come back next year, et cetera, et cetera. We were, Damien, we were walking down an aisle, a, par, a, par, a, a portion of an aisle that we had not gone down in the previous two days. And so uh, while we did see everything by that point, <laughs> just happened to happen or just happened to uh, walk down that one mm-hmm. aisle that we, we, we missed, we did see everything. And so that I, I did like the fact that uh, uh, the three days allowed us to do all these things that we wanted to do without feeling like, well, what are we going to do now? We've yeah. seen everything. We've done everything. What What is there to do? So I, I really like that. Um, uh, but the, the, the one issue I did have with, well, there's a couple issues I had with this year's show. <laughs> um, one is the panels, like you mentioned. Um, it didn't seem like they had as much content that I was interested in. And I'm in, interested in the same stuff that you are. Where you know I want to go listen to these creators talk about their craft, talk about their the, whatever it is that they're working on currently, that kind of stuff. And while we did have some of those, uh, they they were not there weren't as many. I was looking at my schedule before we got there. You know Thursday Thursday night as we're driving out, I'm looking at my schedule, going over things. You know because you know they update things last minute. Oh, that was the other thing. I'll come back to that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> my other complaint. Uh, 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 looking at the schedule and, and making sure, okay, what am I going to go to, you know? And there was really not that much. And usually I'm, uh, it's more uh, for any con I've ever gone to. It's usually, I have to choose between two or three panels that are going on at the, around the same time. Right. And I really didn't have that at Rose city. The focus seemed to me to be more on, um, writing and cosplay stuff, and there was one other topic that I I've forgotten at the moment that seemed like that there was there's more of a focus. And and I, I'm not saying that that is a bad thing. I'm not complaining right. about that. I, I I like that they're tra- they're starting to expand uh, uh, the the various topics uh, that they like to explore. That's that's a great thing. It's just that you know I'm not you know I'm I'm not a cosplayer. Right. 
Uh, I'm not interested in, in, in uh, some of the writing stuff. I've been there, done that in other, in other ways in uh-huh. my life. You mean ones so, that are giving advice to writers? And yeah. Kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I've been there and done that too. So yeah, I've had enough yeah. of that, <laughs> but, but I can appreciate that that's an important thing. Um, before we go on to your other complaint, I just wanted to um, point out that for some people who might not know that Portland, Oregon has become the go-to place for comic creators to come to live. It feels like about 50% of the comics industry lives in Portland now. It does, yeah. And that shows in the um, the enormity of the Artist Alley, which seemed, I mean, I tried, I went through the Artist Alley several times because I just couldn't take it all in. Why aren't more of those people in panels? You know? Um, yes, You've got this huge number of artists there, not just the artists who live in Portland, but the other artists come to Portland for this convention because there's so many people there for them to mingle with um, in their profession. And so there's just a huge number of creators there, almost none of whom were in panels with, you know, some exceptions, of course. And then for whatever reason, um, Kelly Sue DeConnick was on four panels, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> actually five and so <laughs> it just seemed like they i don't know there's something just sort of weird in the programming almost like a myopic uh whoever was doing the programming didn't see the full picture of of what a resource portland is well and and i, I might be wrong about this but i but i also think that uh a lot of the panel stuff has to do with who or, or what is what is uh, proposed? So right. maybe maybe there weren't maybe, maybe there, all those people from Artist Alley are not being not interested in going on panels. Uh, maybe or or you know the people that that normally um, you know who, who who may or may not be creators right. uh, uh, didn't offer those possibilities up. I don't I don't know. Uh-huh. It's, it's it's hard to say. I'd be really curious. Right. How how that stuff gets decided. Yeah, maybe there's a lack in a channel of communication saying to creators, hey, if you want to be on a panel, contact us and we'll, you know, let us know what subjects you would be good for. I know that's how they do it at science fiction conventions. Um, when I used to, you know, hang out with all the science fiction writers, they were all always eager to be on panels, except for me. And <laughs> and so they were always in discussions with the people running the con of what panels they could be on. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, the number of creators there was kind of stunning. And like I walked past Michael Golden, a kind of legend of late 70s and 80s comics. And there he is in his booth. There was no panel on Michael Golden that I know of um, or with Michael Golden as a part of it. Uh, that's just one example. Anyway, the, and, and to the, to the three-day subject while I'm thinking of it, I talked to my comic book shop guy on Wednesday and he was very upset about the three day aspect. He felt he had to pay for a table for one more day, but he made around the same amount of sales as he did Ah, in two day. Yeah. And he felt in fact that maybe he didn't sell as much as he could have because he, he, a lot of what he specializes in are a little bit more high end silver age comics and the like. And he felt that people felt they had a lot of time to think about making the purchase and then did not end up circling back to him to buy it later at the con. He probably ran out of money. <laughs> but then I went, then, um, I don't know if you remember Cosmic Monkey, which, Cos- yeah, Cosmic Monkey, which was the really huge comic book store I took you to mm-hmm. um, with, you know, two floors and sort of two floors. Anyway, I asked him if he had the same experience and he said no, that he did fine. So. Uh, Two different experiences from different. Um, but he said that he was only selling like um, dollar book comics, dollar box comics at the con, hmm. or that was what his focus was. I know when I went by his booth, I noticed a lot of $3 trades and things like that. So yeah. he went the bargain route. So this guy who's selling the more upscale comics, so to speak, uh, did not do well, but the guy selling the cheap ones did do well. So that, that may be an entirely different issue. I think so because I I whenever I go to any con and I see the higher end dealers and I see the the um, I'll call them discount dealers at the moment. Right. But, um, uh, uh, what I see is people, you know, flocking around the discount right uh, boxes, and I hardly see anybody at at the higher end folks. Now that's not to say that they're obviously not there, but 
you know. Right. So it may be an an evolution of con comic book shopping that he's not doing as well. Yeah. But he felt it was the three days and he felt that that the con that it was great for the con to add three days because they can charge everybody with the table at the con for another day, whereas it wasn't so great for him. And perhaps not so great for us if they're not filling up the panels well enough. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, speaking of speaking of the the cost of tables, I did see some chatter that I don't have a context for, uh, nor very much information. But I did see some chatter from people that it, that were you know paid for a table at the con, and they yeah, I think I think it's more than just the the price has gone up per day. Also, yeah, exactly. So hmm. So I you know as 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 Rose City. Uh, navigates this this new paradigm that they've set up with with a three day con. They're going to have to. I, I would assume they'd have to make some adjustments to 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 make sure to to bring back these these creators, especially the ones who are local. Right. You know, to make it to make it uh, uh, and uh, to have some sort of incentive for them to want to come, just, not just because they're local. Right. So my my shop, the the people who sell the high end comics next year plan to just split a table with one other dealer ah. and not buy a whole booth. And um, yeah, so I, I would hope that they charge a little less to the artist alley people than the people selling things. But Exactly. I, yeah. I, I don't, you know, I have no but idea I don't that, know. what, what yeah. the pricing tiers are, but I, you would hope that they would do that. Maybe, right. maybe they think that, that the, those artists make up, make their money through the commissions that they do. Right. I, I don't know. And some do, but not all of them. Yeah. A lot of them yeah. probably are just there to show their faces and meet people. Yeah. It, I'm always surprised when I go here lately, the last couple cons I've gone to, I'm, I, I've been surprised at some of the, um, I'll say older seasoned artists that, right. I, that I know of, like, artists, like Michael Golden. Right. Artists you don't see actively creating anymore. Right. But, you know, in the they, comics field, they they are they are well known to a you know a certain segment of us comic right. fans, <laughs> older comic fans perhaps, uh, and I I hardly see anybody at their tables. Yeah, that can be also very weird that when there's not many people at their tables. Yeah. I think I think for someone like Michael Golden, if he were on a panel that was well tailored so that it would attract the older fans who say, Oh, what's happened to Michael Golden. And I would like to hear tales of the golden age of Michael Golden. I think if you went to a panel and then you got a feel for him and then you would be more likely to go to his table and ask for a sketch or something. I find going to some people's tables cold, a little intimidating, particularly if they're legends in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I talked to mostly people who I was unfamiliar with because that was easier than, than the familiar people. <laughs> Damien, first of all, you you just came up with the perfect panel title for a Michael Golden panel. So uh, <laughs> I expect to see that next year at Rose City Comic Con with you hosting it. <laughs> the golden age of Michael Golden. <laughs> there you go. I'm serious, man. This That's awesome. Uh-huh. I have heard... Um, Brian Michael Bendis on podcasts on a podcast somewhere a a number of years ago talking about his, you know, our dream artist to work with. And Michael Golden was one of them. And he said that Michael Golden turned him down. (gasps) Wow. So it's interesting. Michael Golden may have decided not to do comics by his own choice, Hmm. perhaps. And perhaps he doesn't like doing them anymore. Um, That that's just a total guess. And, and there's probably a different story in everyone. I, I did have a long conversation or several long conversations with this guy that I liked chatting with, Bruce Zick. And he did Thor in the 90s. So, of course, no one read oh, that. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> and now he it. does occasional uh, graphic novels with Mike Richardson at, at Dark Horse. But mostly he, he does um, background designs for Disney movies. Hmm. So he says that drawing comics is just a hobby. And that his real job is is working for Disney. Interesting. Um, so so he had some really impressive like backgrounds to the movie Hercules and other things like that that he had done. Anyway, we're getting we're straying way off. the. Um, <laughs> you had another complaint about about the scheduling and the three day stuff. Maybe it was just the scheduling. 
Well, no, there, there. Uh, I hate to say complaint because uh, the uh, other issue was, that came up for you. It, well, it, it was a disappointment because uh, two people, and these are you know, more, they're yeah, they're celebrities. Um, uh, Felicia Day and Carl yeah. Urban were supposed to be at Rose City Comic Con this year, and I and I, I I'm a huge fan of Felicia Day's. Uh, and she hasn't been, she hasn't been, uh, going to the cons that, that, you know, that I am able to go to in the last couple of years. Uh, you know, she's been busy. Um, I think she has a kid now. Uh, and anyway, so when she was announced, she was announced as the first guest, the first celebrity guest for the con. I'm like, yes, finally, uh, she'll be back. And so, uh, all excited about that. I think it was. It was either the day before or a few days before we found out that she had to cancel because she had a, a work commitment, which is apparently the first time she's ever had to do that. Right. Uh, it's the first con that she's had to cancel uh, her appearance at. So, you know, we were disappointed about that. And then, uh, you know, Carl Urban was going to be there. He, uh, you know, we really like him from from his or his, uh, him him playing uh, Dr. McCoy in the new Star Trek. Uh-huh, Bones. Yes. Yeah. And so, uh, I, I've seen him before, but you know, it's like, you know, it's nice to see the, those, those actors that you, the, that you like. And, um, he's actually quite funny and really engaging. He knows how to play to the audience without yeah. coming across as, as, uh, disingenuous. Uh -huh. So, uh, he, he, he it was just going to be fun. And, and, you know, I, I, while well, I go to these cons to go to these panels, like we talked about to, to shop, uh, for comics, you know, back issues and to look at the art and maybe buy some art. My family likes to go in part to, especially my wife, to, to sit in on the celebrity guest panels. Right. And so, uh, when, when two of the people that she was planning on seeing canceled, we you know we were, we were, uh, disappointed about that. Uh, they did, they did add at the last minute, they did add William Shatner on Sunday as, as sort of a replacement, I guess, uh, -huh. uh which we did go to. I mean, oh, I'm did? thinking, okay. I'm thinking Damien that, that, you know, this, that might be the last time I get to see Shatner. Right. <laughs> you know, he's, he's kind of getting up there in age. Um, but, uh, uh, so, so there was that, like I said, disappointment. The other thing I thought was interesting, uh, this year, I feel like I'm talking about too many complaint things and I should be talking about all the cool stuff, but that's okay. Uh, we'll go on to the cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, they, they instituted, which uh, this is a good thing. It really is a good thing. They instituted a security check where you had to go in a certain door, certain door specifically right. this year. That was different where, than past years. Exactly. Exactly. It used to be and, you could go in any door and there's like 50 doors to the convention yeah, center. Yeah. And so, yeah, they restricted where you could get in. And uh, if you had a bag, which most of us carry bags to cons so we can, you know, carry the stuff that we buy, uh, they checked them. Right. So that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. What, what I, what I, the complaint about that was it wasn't very clear on that first day, <laughs> which door we were supposed to go, you know, cause I, like I said, right. I had to go exchange my, my paper printed copy of my tickets for the actual badges. And so I asked this guy, well, where do we go for this? And he pointed me down the hill towards one of the main entrances. And so we go down there and that's not where we were supposed to go. That that area was for the uh, the people who were there uh, on the show floor. The the uh, not attendees. What what's the right word for those those folks? Vendors. Vendors. Okay. Right. And so so we go down there. Like no, you got to go all the way back the other way, back <laughs> up the hill and around. So that was kind of you know that. Kind and of you were too. worrying there might be a long line awaiting you. Yeah. Right. Luckily, right. there wasn't. Right. There, there was not. Right. Um, and luckily, uh, as I turned around to walk back up the hill, well, guess who comes down walking down the hill towards me? Felicia Day. No, I wish. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and she says, "I've just left my uh, husband slash boyfriend. No, 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 I'm no, looking no. for a second husband." No, no, no. I will not. I will not take that bait, Damien. Uh -huh. Get me She's in trouble not, with my wife. Not your Bon Jovi. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, uh, Neil Adams is approaching me. You know, he's oh. just walking down to go into the entrance he I is not go into. He's a big vendor. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, I look up, I see Neil Adams there, you know, I 
I think I have, I guess I have this goofy smile on my face and he says hello to me. Just, you know, no provocation on my part. Oh, except that's maybe nice that goofy man. smile. Yeah, he just says hello. He just said, said, said hello to me. I thought that was really, really kind of him. Because he, he kind of comes across as a bit curmudgeonly sometimes. Yes, yes. <laughs> I've had that impression. Yeah, yeah. So that was kind of cool. But then, you know, we went up and got, finally got in there, got our badges, et cetera, et cetera. So, and then the con started. I had as, I had problems finding the entrance too. Oh, you did. Okay. Even, even though I could see it, there was this yellow tape, and I was yeah. trying to figure out. You had to zigzag, and I zigzagged in the wrong direction a few times before I found my way in. Yes, I they should have put up some signs with arrows. Or arrows, something. all that's Would all they had to do. So simple. Yeah, all they had to do, and it, they even had people there. You know, like like I said, the guy. I asked the guy. You know, he just pointed me in the wrong direction, but they had people there to direct you. It just wasn't. Right wasn't as clear. They, they could have had some, a bit more signage and it would have made things a lot simpler, but I think, yeah. I think all of our complaints are probably due to growing pains. You know, as you said, this is the first year they did the security and it's the first year they've had, uh, three days to fill. And, um, I bet they're kind of trying to figure out how much money can we charge vendors and that, you know, they're playing with, with their growth. Yeah. Which, so so I'm guessing that next year the three day thing will be better than it was this year. That's my I would guess. hope so. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. And it wasn't horrible. We still had a good good con, right? Yeah these are these are these are minor quibbles, right. really, in the in the right. in the the grand scheme of the con because everything else was was such such uh, a fun time, such a blast. So did you want to talk about? things day by day you talk about your friday your saturday and sunday experience or do you want to just go to highlights uh, well my notes are day by day so that okay so the, why don't we follow that let's, and you, let's do so that. you talk about your highlights of, or your day and then i'll <laughs> throw in any highlights that i can think of okay well what when did you i forget when did you you didn't get to friday until late right because you were working that day right i worked i left work an hour and a half early i think um and traffic on fridays in portland is also very bad and i have a a bit of a commute Oh, okay. So I can't remember the time I arrived, but I know that when I actually got to a panel, it was halfway through the um, the Lazarus panel. So whatever time that was. But I should have made the beginning of the Lazarus panel or pretty close to it if it weren't for all the confusion about where to enter. I thought the Lazarus panel was on Saturday. Was it? Okay. I think well, so. It, I was in the editor's panel on Friday and I, you came in at the towards the end of that one i, I recall oh okay you're and probably that was that started at 2 30 so yeah you probably got there around three then maybe three ish yeah yeah well and 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 officially the con started at one o'clock on friday oh right it was seriously what's up with editors i didn't even know what panel i was in i think you had just tweeted me that you were in panel room <laughs> six and yeah, i went there I did. <laughs> okay but well, before that, uh, on Friday, so we get there, and like I said, my my family uh, likes the celebrity guest things, and there was something that day that they wanted to go to. I forget now because I I was not interested in it. But the other thing that they like to do, uh, and I like to do, is to walk around Artist Alley. Uh, my granddaughter Madison uh, is uh, really getting into art. She really likes to look at the art. And normally when we, when we, you know, walk the aisles of Artist Alley, we're doing, you know, cause they got, you got stuff on both sides of you normally. We're doing the, you know, the, the, the head back and forth as you walk by <laughs> uh, trying to catch everything. Uh, so we don't have to walk as much. Right. But right. she was stopping so many times to look at things more, you know, uh, with more intent. And I thought that was really cool. Uh, which also, and part, partly why, uh, or part of the reason why I like that is it caused me to slow down and to, to see things that I, you know, I barely glanced at that I, that I like to see. So, right. um, I, 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 I'm, I'm in such a hurry to try and get every, get as much in as possible uh -huh. that I, you know, I, I may have missed some, missed some stuff. So um, for Madison's example, kind of teaching you a new way to enjoy the con. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but you know, you still have to. You have to balance that with all the other things on your, you know, the, the constrictions on your time. Right. And so, yeah, that, that's, that's, it's one of those little dances you have to do at a con 
Uh, Adults are always thinking about what has to happen next, whereas kids are in the moment and they're not oh, yeah, worrying yeah, yeah. about that's, what where you have to get to by X time. <laughs> that's true. That's true. And and so while I may be um, uh, rethinking a little bit how I approach these things, I'm going to have to try and teach Madison to 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 refocus a little bit because she would just stand there for you know five minutes or more looking at this these one or two things, and I, I'm not sure. I forgot to ask her about this. I'm not sure why she was doing that. Was she was she contemplating wanting to buy these things, or she was just so fascinated that she was kind of lost in the moment? But it was you know. Again, adult thing, uh, two minutes tops. Let's move on because we've right. got all this other stuff to look at. <laughs> so, so we were doing that and, uh, that's where, that's where, uh, I, you know, I, I don't know if I actually remember seeing him listed. I'm sure I did. Cause I looked at the entire list of the, uh, the artists that were going to be there, but I, I was still surprised when I walked by Matt Wagner's table and he's uh-huh. sitting there. He's yeah. working on, he's working on a, a commission, uh, for somebody. And I start flipping through, through his art book. Cause he's got, he's got some, uh, some, uh, his portfolio of original yeah. art, right? original art, exactly. Yeah. Original art that, that he's got there and I'm flipping through it. And, and my brain just goes, uh, into <laughs> overdrive because I see at least three of his, his, uh, original art pieces that I want. And, and then he also has a couple prints and, and, uh, now I'm kicking myself, Damien, for not picking up that Superman print that he, that he had. Uh, did you, did you see his stuff? Did you go by his table? Yes, because I was with you one of the times you circled oh, that's back right. to his table. That's right. I, that's right. I did kind of drag you there. I'm like, Hey, look at this and, stuff. <laughs> and I agree with you that art, there was something about it. It really hit a sweet spot and it was very tempting stuff. I wasn't ready to, to spend that much money on art this time. Yeah. Maybe next yeah. time. Yeah. But. Well, that, and that was a thing, um, cause, uh, the art was, uh, a bit pricey from my perspective only, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a connoisseur of, of original comic art and, and when, what that means, you know, what, what the cost means and all that kind of stuff. So I, I, it being, it being the first day I decided while I really want one of these Grendel pieces that he had, he had, there were two of them that I really wanted. And I couldn't decide which one at that point. I couldn't decide which one I really wanted. So because of that, and it was the first day, I decided I'm going to come back later. Whether and I, and I and I did not know at that point whether it was later that day or sometime in the days following of the con. But I wanted to see more. Uh, and I, you know, I was talking to my wife as we left the table, and uh, she's like, "Well, you know, she, she's she's so good. She, she she's she's really great." to me about this mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Cause she's like, if you really want it, just get it. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's this much money and that's a lot. And there's all this other stuff that we haven't even looked at yet. We haven't even started shopping for the comics that I want to buy. Right. And she's like, so what? Just get it. I'm like, Oh man, you were, you were really an enabler, <laughs> <laughs> but in the best way. <laughs> <laughs> but we, so yeah, we left, we left Matt Wagner and I was, that's all I could, Damien, that's all pretty much all I could think about the rest of that day. Oh, that's was, funny. <laughs> was, was going back there and, and checking that out. You know, I, I talked to him about, about, uh, you know, like you, 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 you said, you mentioned earlier that, you know, going up to like well-known, um, uh, comic creators and that's kind of intimidating. Yeah. Uh, and, and I feel the same way. And Matt Wagner was one of those. And so, Whenever I go to talk to people, I'm like, I, I got to have something to say that doesn't sound stupid, right? And so my brain is just racing. Right. What, what, do I, what do I say to Matt Wagner? What, what, what can I say that doesn't sound stupid? And, and you know, I just, I just start talking to him. You know, I, I really like your work, that kind of thing. And I mentioned that, you know, somehow I'm, in my collection, I ended up with Grendel number one that he came out with. You know, I think it was like 1982, I want to say. That sounds about right. I, I remember yeah. reading the trade of the original Grendel around 86. Okay. So he, he must have been all before then. Yeah. So I, I just have that one issue of Grendel and it made, and uh, yeah, it made such an impression on me. Oh, and I guess I'd, I'd seen uh, more of Grendel in his mage book. That's probably where I first encountered yeah. him. And, you know, had, I get mage, backup stuff. The, the timeline of mage and Grendel, I might've been referring to Ma- when I first saw mage, but anyway, go ahead with your story. 
So you told him about the first time you picked up. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, I got I got Grendel number one, and I that really made an impression on me. And I really liked the character, and and his 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 immediate response was, "Well, what about Mage? Did you know I have uh, <laughs> uh, the new series out?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, I know." <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. He was he was you know being the the, the consummate salesman right uh, in so, that moment. Well, and and I don't blame him because it's hard to find out about some of these things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Most people are not scouring the internet every day for more comic book news. <laughs> um those of you who do it know who you are, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not I'm not one of those either. <laughs> um what what was I going to say? Uh And are you currently getting mage? No, uh, because I'm trade waiting it. <laughs> yes, I have on my shelf um uh, the deluxe, I guess deluxe, I don't know, the hardcover collection of both volumes, one and two, of his series. And so I want I want the third volume in hardcover to go with the other two that I have. Makes perfect sense. So I, I'll be waiting for the for the hardcover trade on on that one. Right. But hopefully, you know, I don't think the individual issues are making a big splash. I think most people probably know Mage from the trades because it was such an obscure comic when it first came out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I want to continue getting it in trades also. That's the way I always read it. Well, so that wasn't the only conversation you had with Matt Wagner because I was there for a different conversation <laughs> about the color schemes in his in his drawings that he was showing. I don't know if you remember that, but he was talking with you and a little bit with me about how he used to do full color drawings. And now he just does what was it? Red and black drawings. Yeah. And so you had several conversations with him, I guess. Yeah. Do you, points. do you remember uh, what he said about that specifically about why, why black and red as opposed to some other color combinations? I don't think he's, I don't think he specified why red. I think he was yeah, just okay. talking about, how he realized it was just as good with just that one color as yes. multiple colors. Yeah. And, and for his art, that's totally true. It, it uh -huh. looked awesome. I think, I think because of that conversation, I, I went away from that thinking I should have asked him about that. Yeah. And I never did. So uh, yeah. hopefully he'll be at uh, next year's Rose City Comic Con. Maybe I can ask, that's I can do a follow up. Right. But <laughs> I think he lives in Oregon, but not in Portland. But. Yes, uh, he did. I did have a conversation with him on Sunday about that very thing. Um, in fact, we had a great conversation. He talked about his son because um, uh, his son colors his his books, oh, neat. His, his his mage comic right now. And uh, uh, there's some other things, some family stuff he talked about. And and uh, but, yeah, it was it was it was a nice conversation. It, he's 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 very good at talking to total strangers who right. approach him. <laughs> at one point i think it was on saturday or maybe it was later on friday i forget now but i, I came back to look at stuff and i said i'm, I'm not stalking you <laughs> he's like what <laughs> <laughs> but it was good it was good and and then and so then i think after that um it was about time at some point it was about time to go to that first panel which is the the editor's panel that you you, you oh that was the first one you went to that is the first one i went to uh, because I'm, well, while I have, I've always been interested in how writers and artists create comics. I have been in more recent years becoming more and more interested in how, in what roles editors, uh, play in, in comic book production. Uh, part of that is because I'm an editor at, in my, you know, my real life job, right. uh, not in comics, but, uh, in a totally different a different capacity. So, but I'm, I'm always curious, you know, what, what that entails, what that means for them, what do they have to do? And so I got it. I think I got a good, a good education as, as far as what, at least what the dark horse editors do, because that's, right. that's who was on the panel. Uh, and, and, and what was nice about that is that they had, they had, uh, three different editors, uh, and, and an art, I think an artist who was hosting it. I can't remember who that person was at the moment. But uh, the three different editors had basically three different areas of expertise or responsibilities. So that was kind of neat to see or to hear about. And then that's that's when you came into the picture. Right. Sorry, I'm trying to find the description because I'm, I'm annoyed that I can't remember the name of the artist who was 
I can't find the description of it in the panel, in the, in the um, program. That's weird. It's not there. Anyway, yeah, I came in and, and got – it seemed like a good panel even though I probably just got the last 10 minutes of it. Yeah. Um, and I – you know, I now realize I – not only did it take me a long time to figure out how to get into the convention, but then I went to the wrong area looking for the panel rooms. It was very confusing <laughs> at first and their map is not very helpful. No, no, it is not. And so by day two, I knew exactly where to go. But, but so I missed a lot of the panel because I went all the way to the wrong end of the convention center. And then back before I found you, you guys. Did you end up going to like where the big panel rooms were? Yes. And then I thought yeah. I thought that the, the smaller panels were directly below them. And I kept looking in that end. And I don't know if they had changed it from last year. Probably not. I probably just misremembered. But so anyway, that's that was a, a bit of a frustration, too. It'd be great. There was a map that just said pointed panel room, panel rooms one through three this way, panel rooms five through six that way or something yeah, like that. Yeah. But anyway. and, and, what, and what's, what's also frustrating about that is that if you look at the signage for the convention center itself, their, their room numbers are different from the room numbers that the con actually uses. Right. The con makes up their own room numbers. <laughs> yes. So that's kind of frustrating. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, um, but then so after that, you went to a different panel uh, that was immediately after that one. Yeah, I and your granddaughter, um, Gabby, went to. It was writing comics for kids. Yes, and it was that we were amongst about fifteen people in the room, <laughs> and it was very interesting. But but I felt like I might have left earlier if it had been more crowded. But I felt bad. And I didn't know what Gabby was feeling, you know, whether she was enjoying it or not. And that was part of my concern. I didn't know. Oh. Um, I did whisper to her a few times to make sure she was okay. And she said she was. She's pretty easygoing. She'll, she'll go along with pretty much anything. She, she did it. She over Madison attended uh, uh, the majority of the panels with me. Right. Uh, and even though she, I mean, she did tell me that she got bored. Um, at the ones where it was the, 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 the creator talking about his or her work. Right. Um, she still, she still, she said she enjoyed hanging out with me. So, uh -huh. you know, there's that. So she probably would have been okay if you wanted to duck uh -huh. out early. So she was bonding with you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And I can see what, if you don't know anything about the creator and haven't read their comics at all, oh, yeah. a lot of those panels are not interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this was just, unfortunately, I thought it might be like a whole panel of, a large panel of people had written for kids comics, but it was just two people. And it was one who wrote grumpy cat interviewing Paul Tobin, who's done a number of kids comics, including plant, the plants versus zombie comics, which I'd read with my daughter and which were quite excellent as kids, young kids comics. So I actually even asked a question, which I thought was really spot on, but he, he didn't have much to say about it. So <laughs> like, come on, no one's asking you questions. You've got nothing to fill this hour. <laughs> Dig into my question a little more, but they didn't. <laughs> um, it probably just didn't seem as interesting a question to them as to me. What, what, what was your question? My question was about how do you uh, pace a children's comic differently than an adult's comic? That's a great question. Right. And, uh, and he just said something about, you know, well, I'm like a seven-year-old inside, so I I make it more like my inner seven-year-old would want, which was partially a good answer, but I, w I would have wanted a little more. There, there must be some real technical thinking going on there because adult comics can take a whole issue just to introduce characters or something. And, and kids' comics, you do that in a page. So I just thought there'd or, be a lot more. Or a panel. Yeah. <laughs> And the guy interviewing him who does Grumpy Cat, his main area of interest is what adults, adult issues do you sneak into your kids' comics to entertain yourself while you're doing kids' comics? Interesting. Which to me was interesting for one question, but he kept coming back to that kind of thing, you know. Huh. How are you being subversive in your kids' comics? And, yeah. And maybe yeah. he thought that would be an issue that would interest adults about kids' comics. Perhaps, yeah. Anyway, but it was mostly a good panel. 
Gabby did tell me later that she really enjoyed that panel. Uh huh. Oh, good, good. Pro- in fact, that was probably her favorite panel. If I, aside from any of the celebrity ones that she she went to. Oh, cool, cool. With us, um, so yeah, she she liked that a lot. So thank you for um, keeping an eye on her for for me <laughs> for that hour. <laughs> that was the one instance where there were two panels at the same time that I was interested in. There was that, and there was a spotlight on Scotty Young. Yes. Yeah. And in the heat of the moment, I chose that one. I chose the kids writing one because I've heard a lot of interviews with Scotty Young on podcasts. So I figured, mm-hmm. well, it might be kind of similar. So I'll go to mm-hmm. the one mm-hmm. right? less familiar stuff. So so while you were doing that uh, or attending that panel, yeah. uh, I met up back up with with my wife and Maddie and uh, we uh, were just looking around. Uh, the show floor again. And that's where I came across um, the writer of the, the, the comic book Sentinels, uh, Rich Bernatovich. I, I, I'm, uh-huh. hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. And, and Sentinels is a comic that I had have recently discovered or had recently discovered on Comixology. There were four issues or so that were on Comixology. And uh, I, I enjoyed the story enough that I was, I was looking for more. Uh, I just I hadn't really looked to see what was available at that point. But then, you know, we're just, again, we're walking through and Madison's slowing me down. And I think she's she was at the, the table next to Rich Bern- Bernatovich's table looking at something. And I'm just kind of looking around there and I see I see on his table these these uh, these volumes of Sentinels. I'm like, you do Sentinels? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, yeah, I'm the writer, blah, blah, blah. And so we, we had this, this like 10 minute conversation about, uh, uh, his book and, uh, what they're doing. He, they, he was selling, there are four volumes. There are four trades, uh, for 15 bucks a piece that he was selling for 20 bucks, a set for 20 bucks. And, uh, so I, I, uh. I, I left, but I came back later and I bought those four, I think before the end of the day, because I want, I want the whole story. These are, these are black and white. They're not colored like, like the offering on comiXology, but, uh, you know, now, now I have the, and it's a complete story. It's, you know, beginning, middle, right. end, that kind of a thing. It's not going to continue on, but he did have other things that, that, uh, you know, that he, that he was doing relating to the Sentinels universe, but not with those, spe- those specific characters. And come to find out, he does um, this online uh, uh, web comic uh-huh. uh, that is more. He said was more kid kid friendly, uh, or or more geared towards kids. So I'm gonna uh-huh. take a look at that at some point. Maybe talk about it here on the podcast. But that was just uh, one of those funny little things that that you you know you, you go to a con and I had no idea this guy was there. And right. it's it's about something that I was interested in. And we had this great conversation and. And whatnot. So it, it was, it was really cool. And then, you know, I, we did some shopping. We stopped walking around our I said, Kitra, we, we've been here for half the day and we haven't shopped for comics. I'm, I'm, uh, the, the, uh, the, the comic book kid in me is getting a little anxious that I'm not looking for the comics that I want uh-huh. and, and they're, and they're, they'll be gone. <laughs> do, do you come to the con with a list of what you want to look oh, for? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> that list used to be. Pages and pages. I, I was trying to come up with a number, at least 20 pages. Whoa. And then I, I cut back significantly after the last couple cons that we, we went to. And now it's, 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 uh, you know, it's more like a couple pages worth of, of comics that I'm looking for. And then, Damien, I, did, I didn't even – so I uh, ended up buying some stuff from I Like Comics. Yes. Uh, their booth. One of our favorite shops. <laughs> yes. As Cheap Skates. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because they had they had uh, what was it? They were seventy I mean, percent had, off. Well, they had that too, but but I think I think uh, it was a twenty percent off on Friday. I mean, they did end, end up having seventy percent off on Sunday. Oh, was that just Maybe, on Sunday? I thought they I, have different sections. They have like a seventy percent off section. I think you're right. Those are maybe more reader copies, and then they have a twenty percent off section. Yes, they have twenty percent off their bundles, which are already really cheap. Their sets, yes, yeah. yes. That's the one thing I love about I like comics is, I mean, even in their store, they offer these sets of, of books, right? And so I ended up, I ended up getting a few sets of comics that I wasn't even looking for. They weren't on my list, yeah. but I, but I saw them, and I'm like, 
I kind of wanted to read that. So, and here it is. Actually, I think they were, I think they were half off. For oh really? Sets. Oh, okay. or I might be, I might be confusing that with a different vendor that had sets. No, I am. I am. It was a different vendor that had sets at 50% off on Sunday. Anyway, I ended up getting those and, and, uh, uh I ended up getting a Batman Grendel by Matt Wagner uh-huh. two issue set. And then I stupidly forgot to bring them back to Matt Wagner's table to have him sign them. Stupidly. I made so many rookie mistakes at this con. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of moving parts to keep track of. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then at the end of the day, uh, we went to the, um, Mike Allred is bugged panel. Right. Right. What did you think of that panel? Uh, well, it was because it was Mike Allred, it was his wife, and Lee Allred, his brother. Who was the writer of Bug. Right. And so I had I had no idea that, that the other Allreds would be there, which which was really cool, you know, because mm-hmm. um you got to you got to hear a little bit because it was it was really strange to me, Damien, because uh Mike was obviously the the most uh, verbose out of the right. trio. His wife barely said anything, and only in response to prompting from Mike, yes, uh, or or um, or or Lee, and Lee was pretty much the same. I mean, he it was it almost seemed like he was Lee Allred was really I don't know I don't know if it was shy is correct or I I don't know what, but he he seemed really reticent to to speak up. I mean, he when when he did have something to answer, he did so right, and it wasn't like it was it was hard for him. It was just. I, it was ironic because he you would think the writer would be the verbal yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And he's done a number of writing projects now. He filled in for Matt Fraction on FF when Fraction left that. Okay. He wrote the Batman 66 meets the Legion. Which was really good. And and now he's written Bug, which has its pluses and minuses, I, I'd say. And I think he may have worked on some of their indie projects, too although not positive. And he said that he makes his living as a science fiction writer, although his name is not familiar to me from science fiction. But he was highly unverbal, so that was a bit surprising. Um, yeah. And then there was a... Uh, wasn't there... Was that the British professor moderator again there? I believe so, yeah. And and he had this great slideshow, but it took them a long time to get the slideshow going. <laughs> and I found the slideshow the most interesting part of yeah, the... Yeah panel and i think the for whatever reason i felt like this moderator was not the right person for mike allred the uh, the moderator was very intelligent and was making all these connections between jack kirby and mike allred and all of that stuff with his slides but mike allred seemed i don't know the 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 panel just didn't seem as as i don't know uh, it seemed like they were struggling to keep a conversation going in, in general Okay. To an extent. I mean, it wasn't horrible yeah. or anything. But no, no. Yeah. I, I, and higher yeah. expectations. And Mike Allred has done so much work that I've liked recently. Um, that le- that Legion <laughs> issue, the um, recent issue of the Doom Patrol, uh, his work on Silver Surfer, I, I think has been some of the peak of his career. So I wish they talked about a little more than just Bug, but all they talked about was Bug. Yes. And that, so that's something that you and I had discussed was that, uh, beginning with that panel and there were, there were some, uh, at least a couple others where it seemed like they, they were, for whatever reason, they were intently focused on whatever the, the, the project du jour of the creator, uh, is as opposed to, you know, more of a retrospective type, uh, panel, you know, talking about the, the, the career or, or, or certain key elements of the career of, of these, these artists. And I don't know if that was mm, successful. Right. Um, it, it was interesting, uh, for any of the panels that did that, but it, I, you know, I kind of wanted a little bit more out of, out of the artist, uh, right. the writer, uh, not just focusing on the, whatever their latest work is, but you know, I, I can understand that. I mean, that's one way to help, call attention to yeah. and maybe get some sales out of it. So, you know, I don't, I don't begrudge them for that. I just, you know, I, 
I, I just I wanted a little bit more out of it, like I think like you did too. Yeah, I had assumed I they would, still would enjoy talk it. about bug for fifteen minutes and then go off on all kinds of other subjects. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, they uh, like you mentioned, Silver Surfer. That was that's been such a, a uh, I think uh, a fan and critical success. It seems kind of weird that they wouldn't talk about that part. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. I mean, Michael Allred is bugged is a great a great title for a panel though. So right. <laughs> right. I thought it would be a springboard to talk about his whole career, in fact, but, but yeah, maybe he's yeah. tired of doing that. Yeah, maybe. That's, yeah, that's unfortunate, but. And then, um, I can't remember if we went to any other panels. I remember hanging out outside of the Weird Al panel and finally parting ways with you. Yes, because my, my wife and uh, Madison went to the Weird Al Yankovic celebrity panel and yeah so we we went there and just uh, sat outside and talked and <laughs> waited for that to get over before the day ended and uh, I, uh you know based on what i heard and saw because we were sitting basically right and they had the, the the doors there the main doors there and they were open for people to go in and out and so i could i could just see weird al to one side and i could kind of see the the big screen that they had in the background and and you could definitely hear it. It was <laughs> it was not a quiet panel, so that was you know it was kind of neat. Right. Uh, my my wife did say that uh, it was basically they introduced him, and then it was a bunch of questions from the audience, and she doesn't like that so as uh-huh. much as uh, having the celebrity talk or be interviewed by right. the host and then opening it up to questions. Right, and I agree with her. So. Uh, it's kind of like we had two opposite problems. She had no structure and we had too much structure. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Good but point. you do need some structure to get things going, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I remember her saying that to me too about about that panel. And then did you and your family go out to dinner or Yes. Collapsed. We somewhere? went to went to dinner and collapsed in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz it had been a long night before, yes, and it was a, it had been a long day of getting up early and walking around. And uh, I don't know about you, Damien, but uh, I'm getting up there in age, and I, boy, my body can't take a three day con anymore. <laughs> apparently, right. And I'm 20 or 30 years younger than you, but I. <laughs> that's a joke. Um, I'm older than Eric. But, um, but not by much. I, I do find it tiring, but I think I would have at any age. All that wandering through the con floor after a while. I think it's both just physically being on your feet, but also mentally taking in so many sights and sounds all at once, I think, uses yeah. up a lot of energy. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And then you get Saturday, which is, you know, traditionally the busiest day of any con, the most populated day, the most attended day, I should say. Right. Oh my gosh, there were so many people. And it was so warm in that convention center. I did not notice that on Friday, but Saturday, it's almost like they didn't, I don't know, the the air conditioning or the, you know, the HVAC was not working correctly because I was literally my forehead had sweat on it just on the right. sh- walking around the show floor. Too many that, that too way. many bodies in one place, I guess. Yes. Yeah, it was it was that was And your granddaughters were in quite warm costumes. Well, and that's yeah. So, so yeah, that's one thing. Uh, the last couple of cons, uh, my granddaughters, when they attend with us, they like to dress up, and so this 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 con was no exception. And so we they both brought two costumes, and uh, let's see here, they dressed up. As, so Gabby was Gamora without any green uh, face paint. We we didn't we decided not to do the face paint thing. <laughs> um, Probably and, a good idea. Uh, yeah, and uh, 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 Madison, we had bought this kind of generic archer costume with a hood. I mean, it, lo- it looked really cool. It really did. Yeah, I liked her costume a lot. And 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 we did that in part because one of the vendors we found would take your picture in front of a green screen and then put you onto the cover of what looked like a, a, a magazine or comic book cover oh, of wow. your choice. And they had they had several things. Uh, available and so um they had a guardians of the galaxy cover with with like that um the the the, a lineup where you know you you have all the the height lines you know behind you Uh so that you can identify a suspect lineup a suspect lineup Uh yeah and so gabby chose that one (laughs) cool 
and she had this she had this really cool pose where she had her fists out in front of her trying to be really tough like Gamora, uh, which was cute. And and uh, Madison chose uh, a Game of Thrones one because she's an archer and there was a dragon in the background. Uh-huh. Yeah, so it kind of fit their uh, fit that way, I guess. But um, so they did that. So, um, wow, that's really cool. Uh, I hope they're there next year and I can I take my uh, daughter quacking duck. Yeah. To post yeah. That. She would love that. Yeah. And they were really good and it was, and surprisingly cheap oh, really? uh, comparatively to some other things that we've done in other cons. So yeah, it was, it was like 15 bucks. Wow. That's good. For, so you get a, yeah. a, a print of it. Yep. Color print. Um, in fact, if, if they, they were even allowing, uh, uh, more than one person in the picture for the same uh-huh. price. Oh, nice. So you could have had the two of them on the a picture. cover. Yeah. Right. We talked about it, but then we're like, well, it's yeah. just 15 bucks and right. they get their own. So yeah, yeah, we did that. Uh, a lot more walking around. Um, the, uh, I did talk to Greg Rucka that day. There were certain, certain creators that I, I wanted to stop and talk to. Uh-huh. Uh, Greg Rucka was one of them. And did you feel less shy with Greg Rucka than some others? Well, uh, yes. Uh, in a couple of senses, one, he's, he's just a really gracious guy. Um, he makes you feel at ease and I have talked to him, uh, in a previous Rose city comic con or, uh, sorry, Emerald city comic con, but I, you know, I really want to just talk to him and say, you know, Lazarus is one of my favorite comics of all time now. Right. And he was very gracious about that. And, and more importantly, my wife had noticed, she had noticed, I didn't even notice this. She had noticed that they were selling t-shirts uh lazarus t-shirts and so with a michael lark design of forever on the on the t-shirt i'm like well i gotta get one of those and so i bought that from him and uh along with the, this thing that his daughter threw together it's it's a um a care kit these little things you know just little you know like tissues and and hand sanitizer and some other things and just a you know a plain little plastic bag that that his daughter decided that she was going to start doing and and he was selling those for her. I thought that we 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 thought that was a really cool thing and so we bought one of those. Uh-huh. Maybe we'll maybe I'll actually use it the next con that I go to. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, it was it was really cool. Uh like I said I spoke to Greg and complimented him. Uh we ended up going to the Lazarus panel later, which I will talk about in a second, I think. Uh I also wanted to meet Elsa Chartier, Chartier who did uh, Infinite Loop, and she was on, uh, more recently, The Unstoppable Wasp. Very good artist. I have oh, fantasies she... about her drawing the Legion. Oh, my God. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be so awesome. I-, I was really surprised that there weren't as many people, because I walked by their table. Uh, it was it was her <laughs> and her writing partner, whose name I'm forgetting at the moment. There weren't as many people there to, to talk with them. I mean, she was always busy. She was doing commissions, Uh but there just weren't that that many people stopping by their table as, as I would have thought, which is unfortunate, but she's a phenomenal talent. Well, I don't think she's been on something that's, that's true. Caught a large number of people's attention. That's that infinite loop has a small number of people who thought, wow, this is a really great comic. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I've noticed her, sort of scattered here and there, just a few fill in issues here and there before the wasp that I liked. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, uh, as far as, as far as people I had talked to that day, um, that I, that I planned to talk to at the end of the day, I finally got to talk to Matt Wilson, the colorist. Oh, the Matt colorist. Wilson. Yeah. And I had tried to, I had tried to talk to him when I was at heroes con and I was never able, he was never there when I was, when I was at his table and, or, or he was swamped with so many people right? that it's just like, I, I don't have time to, to stand here waiting for this. And I assume then you agree with me. He's one of the best, very best colorists. He, out there. As far as I'm concerned, he's the best colorist out there. I, nothing against all the other great colorists that I like, you know, Jordi Belair, I really like, but she has a different style. Uh-huh. Um, that's great, but I really like Matt Wilson. There's so many books that I read that I really enjoy that Matt Wilson is on and he's right. l- in large part, um, the reason for that. And I told him, I told him that, that I, uh-huh. as much as I like, uh, the wicked and the divine with Kieran Gillen writing, right. it, it's, it's, it's a really interesting story. It's really well told. Uh, the, the, the art is fantastic. I, I really only read that book for Matt Wilson's uh-huh. colors. And I told him that. Yeah, I, 
I I can't say for sure who my favorite colorist is, but he's definitely one of the top three or four. Um, mm -hmm. All of whom may be kind of equal in my mind. Like Dave Stewart. It's hard for me to say, is Dave Stewart Dave better? Stewart's or another great Matt one. Wilson yeah. or... But Matt uh, Wilson Elizabeth is definitely... Brightweiser is another one. Right. She's very good. I, I'm not as aware of as many comics that she colors, but um, I know she does all the... Well, she's currently doing Kill or Be Killed, but mm -hmm. I don't know what else she does. Lee Lowridge is a very good colorist, I think. Yeah. But anyway, Matt Wilson is awesome. So you got to speak to him. And what did yeah. you say to him? I, I, I don't, oh, what you just said. that. You yeah, yeah, just just that. Those comics for yeah. his coloring. And did he yeah. blush or did he say, <laughs> of course. <you laughs> oh, yeah, he, he, he just said thank you. He was, uh, but he was, it was kind of, it was kind of awkward because he was, he was working on something at the same time. And uh -huh. so he. Uh, unlike some other folks that I talked to that, that weekend, he was kind of, I mean, he looked up at me, but he, he kept looking back down and was, was continuing to work on, on stuff. So it was, it was this weird, um, uh, dynamic uh, right. that, that we were having, but uh, you know, I, I, like I said, there were, there were several people I wanted to talk to specifically. I try not to take up too much of their time because I'm not, I'm not asking them, I'm not asking them to do anything for me. Let, you know, not even, not even to sign comics, although I did bring some to have those people sign it, but I never did that for some reason. And so, you know, I just, it, it, for me, it's just a quick, you know, basically, thank you. I like your work, uh, maybe a little bit about why, and then I'm out, you know, cause there's all these other people that are, that are standing there waiting to have a book signed or waiting to buy some art or whatever. So I don't want to, I don't want to take up too much of their time. And then just real quick, uh, I went to see artist tom rogers yeah tom rogers who who was the artist on uh this book called herald um lovecraft and tesla and i did so because uh george hannah from the george and tony entertainment show suggested i go talk to him because he saw uh, george saw that i was going to be at rose city uh he also saw that tom rogers was going to be there so he's like you you should go you should go uh, see Tom Rogers because uh, George, I guess George had, had interviewed the writer of the the, the comic book Herald. Uh-huh. I have not heard and, of this uh, comic, so I guess I missed yeah. that episode. So I did that. I went up to him and said, hey, uh, my buddy George from the George and Tony Entertainment Show said I should come talk to you. <laughs> so here I am. And he was he was really cool about it. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, remember, I remember the conversation on Twitter and he, he remembered, uh, remembered me from that. And uh, so I ended up buying – um, uh, the first three issues he had available of, of that series. And it's, it's something I was, I've been meaning to check out anyway. Right. I actually went to buy a trade from him and he said he didn't have any left, but he had those, those issues. So I bought those. And then, well, uh, the Lazarus panel, uh, is the next thing on my list, but, but Damien, what, what was your experience at the con up to that point? I think, did I just arrive when the La when was the Lazarus panel? I'm looking at the one o'clock is what I have in one o'clock. So, I, yeah, I think I was just you know I could not get there early as I might have liked to, so I think I arrived kind of late around maybe one thirty. Where or I actually got, I feel like I I arrived into the Lazarus panel. Or was I? Wa I can't remember the order of things anymore since I don't have day by day notes. <laughs> I'm afraid. Um, Why but I, you I realized very quickly at the Lazarus panel that I was not interested in it because I'm not currently reading Lazarus, and it was so laser focused on specific scenes. At least at the point where I arrived in, maybe they were more general. I wish I'd seen the first half of the panel. But I arrived halfway in and they were talking about specific scenes, which would have been really cool if I've been currently reading Lazarus, but I'm not. Uh, um, and people who've memorized every episode that I've been on will remember that I gave up on Lazarus because it was too depressing and decided to it <laughs> when I was ready for it. So I think it's an awesome, awesome series, but I just don't. Uh, at the point at which I dropped it, I just was tired of depressing comics. I yeah, mean, it may no, be I, one I of the that. most depressing out there. You know, because of its ties to reality. <laughs> yes, exactly, and that and that's uh, that's a lot of what Greg Rucka talked about at the beginning of the of the panel uh, was the stuff. Basically, the stuff that he researches uh, and reads about and and prepares 
to integrate in some fashion into the book. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's, yeah, it's, it's scary. It's scary. Oh, in fact, I I don't remember if if this question was asked when you were there or it was before you arrived, but, um, there was something in the book and I can't remember exactly what it was they were talking about, but the moderator said, basically said, um, or made a comment about how prescient Greg Rucka's uh, material was considering what's going on basically today. Right. And so that, you know, he talked about that and, and uh, there was a lot of, there was a lot of um, language. Yes. (laughs) And I had, I had Gabby there with me. (laughs) So that was a bit uncomfortable. Um, Yeah. And I, I deal with people speaking in language in front of my daughter. Um, So I felt, I felt uncomfortable just knowing Gabby was there myself. And I looked around and there were some other kids there too. Yeah. Well, she, no, she was preoccupied with looking Uh at uh, some stuff that we had bought the day before, which is good. But I mean, she's still there hearing it, but you know, I, I also, I, I, I have to say, I kind of expected that from Greg Rucka based on other things I've, I've heard him do other podcasts or whatnot. Uh, so, you know, it wasn't totally unexpected, but there was probably more than I really anticipated, but it, it was still a great discussion. I, I really enjoyed the the topic, yeah. you know, because I loved the book. The moderator kind of picked up on using the F word a lot too, as a, just a general <laughs> thing you throw in a conversation every few sentences. Yeah. Yeah. I um, so. Maybe played a little too much into that yeah. for my taste, but it was almost still. like two teenagers trying to be cool by how much they can <laughs> use that language. <laughs> in their regular yeah. conversation. But anyway, it, it seemed like it was a good panel, but I arrived too late. And so I, I moved on to a different panel, yeah. um, which actually turned out to be quite cool. It was called giant size comic book cover story. And it was people yeah, so from was, some that was one I wanted to podcast to. and they projected up old silver age or maybe even golden age covers onto the screen and kind of did a, a joke analysis of what's really going on here. <laughs> huh? You know, what's going on. I mean, it also wouldn't, I, they didn't use the F word nearly as much, but it wouldn't <laughs> have been that appropriate for kids because, you know, there were jokes about people's crotches and stuff like that. Um, but it was all, it, it, it was on such a lighthearted level. I don't think I would have been too upset if my daughter had been at that one. Um, but I know I I didn't I don't know if the name of the podcast is Giant Size Comic Book Cover Story or they were just doing that. I think it was just something they occasionally do on their podcasts. But that was really fun. But but I I didn't see the whole of that because I came sort of towards the middle of that. Well, you're making a, a habit of coming in to panels. I know. <laughs> not a, not at the beginning. <laughs> I mean, part of my frustration of this of this particular con is I couldn't just take the whole weekend off from my family, which just is the way things happen sometimes. And last year, I think I was more able to, to kind of go off on my own the whole weekend. So Damien, I looked it up and it, the, it says the crew of comic book cover story from comic book cover So I said, I, I presume that is exactly. Okay. So that's what it is. Yeah. I'll have to look those up. Look, look that up. It was fun. You know, if, if there is, if it is a podcast, maybe it's just a website then. Um, but if it is a podcast, it seems like something I'd listen to for a while, but you know, if that's what they do, it's fun a few times, but not, uh, yeah, you know. it's, if that's their shtick, yeah, yeah. And they stick to it. all. The they time. were good at it. They were very good at it. Well, that's good. That's good. Uh, what else, what else did you do that day? I'm not sure. <laughs> While you're, while you're looking that up, yeah, I'm looking I just at the schedule up, in my. I talked to, uh, I encountered Jeff Parker, who wrote uh, Future Quest, and he told me a story about uh, Darwin Cook and Darwin Cook's involvement in that title. In few, oh, um, wow. Okay. That's extra heartbreaking. I mean, it's heartbreaking that Darwin yeah, was right, in the first right? place, but that would have been so great. He told me that uh, I guess I guess Darwin Cook was involved in it, but not not to you know to, not to the extent where he was actually. Uh, producing something he was just kind of a in a consulting uh uh, doing consulting with it and so parker had sent the script to the first issue to darwin cook and uh did not hear back from him for days and apparently it was because darwin cook um 
something happened and he didn't, he didn't have uh, uh, service. You know, he was out, he was out of range or something like that. Anyway, so Jeff Parker said he was basically he was sweating it, thinking that Darwin Cook doesn't like his script. Uh huh. <laughs> so that was really cute. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, oh, we'll come back. I'll come back to that because uh, the next thing I have involves you. And I, so uh, to my rec- recollection, I don't think I, I only did one other panel the rest of the day. And that was a big day for wandering around the con floor. Mm-hmm. But, you know, unfortunately, I'd already arrived pretty late. But I think that was the day where I did the a large part of my um, going around and talking to random artists, not like big stars or anything. But I would just look around for people who are self-publishing and I wanted to pick up more self-published comics. So I got uh, quite a few of those, and I had a long conversation with that Bruce Zick fellow. And I there's a um, an artist an artist writer slash self publisher na- named uh, and now I'm going to get his name wrong <laughs> Matt Leswinski. I'm not sure how to, I never asked him how to pronounce his last name, <laughs> but I uh, he is someone who probably through Twitter or maybe somewhere else said that. Um, pointed me to his website where you could read his comics for free and you could also order them to read, to read in hard copy. And so I looked at the art on his website, loved it, decided not to read it for free online because I prefer physical. And I ordered some of his comics and really liked them. So I've been following his self-publishing career since then. You know, maybe that's been a year and he's published maybe three more comics during that time. He's pretty prolific in the sense of being the the one man one man band doing everything and self publishing and of course having a day job and so i i commissioned a piece of art from him oh and he ra- rather than say give me the punisher or whatever i said can you give me a um a space barbarian with a monster coming up from behind him. <laughs> and so I think I threw, that's a little harder thing to do because it was more from scratch than just wow. do an established character shot. So he had to think about it and he worked at it on it overnight. So I feel a little bad that maybe I gave him extra work, but I really loved the end results. Oh, So that is the first time I've ever done a commission. I've bought a little bit of original art from uh, Sean Riaz, who I also have met online, um, who works in Trinidad. But this is the first time I think I've actually commissioned something. Mm-hmm. And it turned out really well. Um, since this is not a visual medium, I won't dig it up right now to show you. But I'll sh- I, so you have to show me. I plan to do a video showing all the stuff I bought at the con. Uh, oh, good. The different comics and some prints and stuff. Um, but what I found and, and kind of we drunkenly or not drunkenly, but tipsily joked about it on a video that I've made, but not posted yet. But I, I will post the co- that eventually. <laughs> I found that it was a little hard for me to not buy things from people that I talked to. So and some of the things I bought were look extremely good. And others afterwards, when I brought them home, I was a little bit eh, maybe I wouldn't have shouldn't have bought that. It's not for mm-hmm. me. Um, but for the most part, I was pretty happy with what I bought. And, uh, I did approach a fellow named Dan Parent, who's a well-known Archie artist, right? um, who seemed to have no one talking to him at all, but he still, I got the sense that I it felt like I'd interrupted him or something, uh. but I, I told him how I've read a lot of Archie with my daughter. And whenever I'm reading one and thinking, oh, this is particularly fun. I'll look back and see the credits include the name Dan Parent in them. So um, he seemed kind of uncomfortable, but we talked a little bit about Harvey Comics because now he's involved with his attempt in reviving Harvey Comics. Hmm. Yeah, I think I, I just found that comic book at another store. My store was supposed to put it on hold form, put it on my pull list, but I guess they failed to. Um, so I need to talk to them about that. But anyway, so... Yeah, that was that was kind of interesting. Um, I mean, he seemed like a nice person, but I just felt like something was wrong. And that maybe added to my shyness of approaching people. I <laughs> so the, the people who are who are unknown people and they've self-published a comic book, they are so eager to talk to anybody walking by. 
Mm -hmm. Whereas the established people may or may not be interested in talking to just random people walking by. Um, I really admired Bruce Zick's art, but I didn't really know who he was, but he was, you know, wonderful. And he and I are probably around the same age and he lives in Portland and, and we had a really nice chat. So now he'll be someone I keep an eye open for. Mm -hmm. I bought a print from him and now wish I had circled back and bought another amazing Batman print he'd done. Well, speaking of prints, yeah. uh, like I said, the next thing on my list involves you. Uh, I, going into this con and, and the last couple cons I've been to, I've, I've had this no print rule. Uh -huh. I'm not going to buy any more prints because I'm 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 running out of space right. in, in my office wall. I can see behind you; the walls look completely full. <laughs> yeah, so uh, so I, to, I was like totally going to uh, keep with that rule until until you uh, came up. Uh, ah, so yes. you, we were all we were both on the show floor, and you uh, I was with my family, and so we'd stop and look at stuff, and you'd go, you'd go on and look at some other things, and we kept circling back with each other. Right. And one of those times you, you showed me this print that I uh, just bought Legion of superheroes <laughs> that you just bought from Sandy Gerald. And I said, and my immediate response says, where did you get that? <laughs> and you pointed me over there. Right. Luckily he and wasn't so, too far. So I couldn't figure out where to yeah. point to. <laughs> yeah. So you, you pointed me to where Sandy Gerald was. Cause I, I had totally missed him. Uh, the first time that I walked through, uh, on Friday, cause he was, he was in an area that we had already walked through. Right. There's and, so much going on in those artist alleys. Yeah, you have to do yeah, it three and, or four times. <laughs> exactly, and and so so I, I immediately beelined it right to <laughs> to his <laughs> his table and I said, "My friend just bought this this print from you, and now I'm here to buy it too." <laughs> <laughs> and it's and, and and I just and I show this up, and so you you mentioned uh, making a video of showing all the things you made uh, that you got there. I did the same thing uh, as well. It's on my YouTube channel. And uh, it'll also be uh, uh, posted uh, on longboxreview.com with this episode. So if people go there and scroll down, they'll see that the, the video they can watch or they can see all the stuff that we got. But it, it's, uh, it's this uh, image of all of these pairs of Legionnaires dancing. And I had seen these images online before. I think Peter Rios had uh, uh, called my attention to it. So I'd seen all this stuff before, but but because it was this nice print all together, I just had to have it. So now I got to figure out a spot on my wall where I can actually put it. <laughs> um, so speaking of uh, Legion of Superheroes, uh, there was another artist there by the name of Jason Metcalf, I believe, who who um, had a a print. <laughs> uh, one again, uh -huh. a print I wish I had I had bought now. Uh, of the Legion of Superheroes. And what was really cool about his work was not only did he have, you know, paper prints, but he also sold these these images on metal. And it was really, you know, shiny. The colors were really pop. That sounds very cool. Yeah. And uh, so I almost got that, uh, his, his Legion one. He also had a, a Justice Society of America one that was really cool. And, but, I, but I was talking to him, asking him all these questions. Well, how do you get this stuff on metal and wh how does, how, what, what do you have to do different uh, with the colors between a paper print and a metal print? And, and uh, I think, I don't think he um, had encountered anybody asking him that kind of question because uh -huh. he didn't really have an answer for me. So <laughs> basically he just said, there must uh, be an answer. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Basically he just said, well, I, I just make the, the file and give it to the printer and they, they do the, the metal thing. I'm like, okay, well, that's, that's, you know, so that's he found still a printer cool. who does metal. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're really cool. Um, and then I, oh, I went back to, I went back to Matt Wagner's table and that's when I bought the, you pulled the trigger. I pulled the trigger that day. Cause, okay. So, uh, there's some more backstory to that. I should, I, guess I should get to. So Friday night, after I'd seen that, or, you know, I, like, as I said, I, I saw the picture, I molded over, I was going to wait Friday night, some while well, during the course of Friday, I had contacted Travis, Mr. Oddfellow's thoughts, uh, because he, he's bought a lot of original art before. And I wanted to get a sense from him. Is this, is this really worth it? And so I'm just, you know, I, I'm describing the picture and you mean like it, price wise, price wise. Exactly. Yeah. 
Um, and, and we had this lengthy conversation through, uh, instant message over our, uh, on my phone with him. And, uh, basically at the very end, he's like, just like my wife, he's like, but if you really want it, it's worth it to you, <laughs> which is he's, they're both exactly right. But, uh, so I, I come to the con Saturday, basically deciding, having decided I'm not going to get it. And so as we were walking around together, and the show floor, and after Sandy Gerald, after uh, getting the print from him, I think that's, uh, I think you were with me at that time. Maybe it was later, but I, I was like, I, uh-huh. I want to go, I want to, I just want to take a look. Yeah, that's what it was. You and I were together. That's, that's the point where you and I were at Matt Wagner's table, I think. And, was it? Okay. and I'm like, I, I just want to take another look at another peek at this thing, you know, just, just to see. And, and I went away from that encounter going, I got to have this. And so I had made, I had made my decision to get it. And so I went back towards the end of Saturday, talked to him some more and he showed me, uh, uh, he was, uh, on Friday, he was working on this commission with a Batman and daredevil, um, together, uh, on, in, in the drawing. Mm-hmm. And he showed it to me on his phone. He said, and I, like I said, I'd, I'd seen him drawing it. He was working on it, but he showed me the finished product. He's like, Hey, did you see this? And I'm like, that is so awesome. I would have, I would have loved that too. And then he showed me another one that was cool as well, but I cannot for the life of me remember what it was, but it was, you know, awesome. And, uh, but then I, I'm like, okay, I want this one. I want this, this Grendel, uh, that you have. And he's like, cool. And so, uh, he's getting it out and he's like, you know, I don't take cards. I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I didn't have enough cash on me. But uh, I, we immediately left his table to go get some, <laughs> to go to the ATM, and he uh, he said he, as as we were doing that he he pulled the I, I noticed he was pulling the the uh, the dollar amount that was printed on the this little card inside uh, with the drawing he's pulling that out he said to remind him that somebody was interested in it so you know so so no one would come back and buy it so we went went got the money came back I I. I paid it for him. He signed it for me, gave it to me. And I was just over the moon. Uh-huh. <laughs> and normally Damien, whenever I spend, you know, any more than say a hundred bucks on something, I, I tend to, I tend to get, uh, uh, I tend to have a little bit of buyer's remorse. Right. You know, it's like, oh, I shouldn't have bought that. I didn't, I didn't need to spend the money, all that kind of stuff. The next day, Kitra, my wife asked me, so are you, are you feeling that way or, or what? And I'm like, no, I am totally stoked that I, I made that purchase and I'm, and still to this day, now it's been a week later and I'm still, I'm still uh, happy as a clam, uh, having gotten that, that, uh, that awesome. piece of original art from Matt Wagner. So that was really cool. You know, sometimes I realize that I, I'll buy a bunch of things that are inexpensive that I kind of like. And maybe I should have spent a lot of money on one thing that I love, you know. That's yeah. Know. That's kind of how I approach the art. It's hard to get out of the bargain hunting frame <laughs> of mind sometimes. So I'm glad that you went with that. I think that obviously a great purchase. Yeah. Do you know where you're going to hang it? Well, I have. Uh, there is a there's a spot here where I've got um, the Jeff DeCall Nightwing that I got at Heroes Con, and uh, the. Um, the I don't remember the character's name from Rachel Rising from Terry Moore that I bought last year at Rose City Comic Con. So I I think I'm gonna have to put it right next to those. Uh huh. And then I gotta I got I I realize I have to move my Barry Kitson Invisible Woman sketch that I got from him at the the first Emerald City Comic Con that I went to. I gotta move that over here. I gotta make an original art portion of my wall. Put them all together. Uh-huh. So yeah. And yeah, you can't see that where you're, where you're looking in the video that, um, here, but, uh, right. I'll, I'll, I'll take a picture of it once I get everything up there and put it out on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. I've been thinking with that, that Sandy Gerald print that we were talking about mm-hmm. that has such a youthful appeal to it. Like it yeah. appeals to our nostalgia, but my daughter really likes it. Oh, I'm good. trying to think of, can I hang it somewhere? Not in my comic book room, somewhere uh, else in the house yeah. as just, a home decoration. <laughs> Ooh. Can I get away with that? 
Yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking the same thing now. I, maybe I can move some of these prints that I have in my office elsewhere in the house. Uh-huh. I wonder yeah. how my wife will think uh, feel about that. <laughs> so I'm thinking of maybe trying to hang the Sandy Gerald print in our stairwell or in the sort of foyer to our stairwell. Yeah. That makes it sound fancier than it is, but the, there's a little <laughs> kind of space where the stairwell is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Hey, speaking of your home, uh, this is, this is one of the, the, the coolest things about going to Rose city comic con this year. Uh, <laughs> Damien invited me and my family over for dinner Saturday night. And so we did that. We went and hung out and had a great conversation. Um, I had some great food yeah, it was really fun chatting with both you and Kitra and my wife, Gretchen, mm-hmm. and um, and our our kids seemed to get along really well. They all went up to my daughter's bedroom and yeah, played with Lego. for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really cool. Uh, in fact, Madison, um, because you had mentioned that that uh, that your daughter would be or might be coming with you on Sunday to the con. Right, which ended and, up not happening. Exactly, and uh, Madison was disappointed. Uh, she really wanted to to hang out with with your daughter some more. Yeah, yeah, that was unfortunate. Yeah, Madison seems to to have done extremely well with my daughter. I mean, I was a little wondering because my daughter is what two years younger than Madison, and then Gabby's even older. So, anyway, they all did well, mm-hmm. and uh, and and Gabby does well hanging out with adults too, which is impressive. Yeah, she's she's pretty easygoing. She gets along with just about everybody. Yeah. Which is nice. And then afterwards, we, you and I went to, uh, we did our second annual visit to <laughs> McMinimums <laughs> for, right. for drinks and right. comic book discussion. And that's where, because um, uh, I had forgotten to bring my recording equipment. and uh, But you recorded uh, a couple videos of us talking about various things. And you released one of them already. I've released one so far. The other one... Because I felt like we were joking about the artists a little bit, oh, I yes. wanted to. I think I'm gonna just after I film something talking about my experience as an artist, Ali, I'm gonna just uh, attach that conversation at the end of it, okay. explaining that you know we were joking because I didn't. I, w- I was a little worried, especially that my that Matt, the one who I commissioned art with could possibly take the conversation wrong. Um, oh yeah, probably not. Probably the context is clear, but. Mm-hmm. I nowadays only drink about one beer at a time. And so four beers had me uh, <laughs> being a bit silly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I've, become I a light, admit, I've become a lightweight lately. <laughs> yes. I have to admit, cause, cause we, we had, we had a, a drink or two at, at, with dinner and then we went out for right. drinks. So right. yeah, I, I was feeling that they were pretty well too. spaced out. So I don't yeah, think there was any serious drinking there, but, yeah. but still I'm just, I'm just so such a lightweight lately that. We kind of had a, a joke there that that uh, you were heartless towards the artists and I was a total sucker to the artists. <laughs> well, neither of which are really true, <laughs> right? But but in the context of you know you 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 said earlier that uh, you know you have you have a hard time not, not buying talking them, to them and not buying some buy. or talking to them and not right. buying something, and I I totally right. can do that. I might feel yeah. bad a little bit about it, but I'm I'm totally uh-huh. okay with walking away without having purchased anything. <laughs> But I, I ordered a commission from Matt completely because I love his art, not, you know, because of that reason or anything. Right, I just right. didn't want him to think that. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing that, Damien. So. But I already that, released some... another one where I just sort of threw out a question at you about whether indie comics might be going towards a downturn. Yes. Um, yeah. So people should which go Which is probably just out. my paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good conversation, though. I, I thought that was that's not something I would normally get into, I think. So. I'm glad you you threw that at me. You, re- I've noticed you're really good. Whenever I appear on 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 your show, you you always have these really uh, off the wall questions that I don't haven't really thought about, <laughs> um, which makes for some great conversation. I, I think anyway, I, I have a great a great time talking uh-huh. with you. So I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. I always have a good time talking with you, but I think we do have slightly different approaches to yeah what subject matter we might cover, even though we overlap in many ways. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, the one thing, the other uh, panel I went to Saturday night, which I only stayed for half of, which I that was the plan all along, was um, Eric Larson's panel, which turned out to be super structured, um, where the interviewer just went through his entire career step by step, which 
was fine. Um, but I was, and maybe they would have gotten to it, but I think they wouldn't have. So I went ahead and left because I wanted to help my wife set up for dinner. I wanted, I wanted to hear about his recent foray into the political sphere with making uh, Donald Trump the villain in his most recent issue of Savage, Savage oh. Dragon. He's on the cover. He's on the cover of Savage Dragon, and then inside Savage Dragon, in the Savage Dragon world, Trump is wanting to expel all aliens—not illegal aliens, but aliens from other worlds, from America. Um, Hmm. And it's quite a savage attack on on Trump and (laughs) and his some of his followers. I won't say all of the people who like Trump are are like that. so anyway, I was interested in seeing if he would talk about politics. He also, I looked it up and he once, he once had a cover with Barack Obama on it saying that Savage Dragon endorsed Barack Obama. So he has not shied away from very strong partisan politics um, yeah. in a way that actually makes me a little uncomfortable. But anyway, so I was interested in that, but I probably should have approached him at his table. You know who Eric Larson is, of course, Mm -hmm. one of the image founders. Um, And I just recently started reading Savage Dragon again, not knowing it was going to get political, um, but I just jumped on because of someone else on YouTube talking about it a lot. Hmm. Anyway, that's the big aside. So then then um, Saturday, I mean, Sunday. Sunday was a very short day for me. So you you were I, I showed up. At like the last few minutes of the, um, I, now I'm blanking on his la- first name, Gibbons. Uh, Dave, Dave Gibbons. Dave Gibbons panel. Yeah. Dave Gibbons of Watchmen fame and of mm-hmm. many other achievements. Did you, that was that the first thing you did at the con that day? Yeah, I think that was like at 10 or 10.30, 10.30 I think in the morning, uh, which is, uh, and you know, I, I had tweeted this out at the time, but it was just, I, I felt it was kind of a crime that that's such a talent, uh, his panel uh, and you had, you mentioned this too, that, you know, maybe yes. because of when it was agree. may have contributed to this, but it was right. sparsely attended. Yeah. Which is really he, unfortunate. He was the biggest comic book celebrity there, in my opinion, you know, yeah, from a historical yeah. perspective. Probably. Yeah. He's one of the co-creators of possibly the most famous comic book of all time mm-hmm. or of all modern times. Yeah. So he really should have given, been given a prime time. They put him in a bit in one of the big rooms, which I think he was the only comic book artist who got that yeah. that I know of. Yes, that's true. Yeah, one of the bigger panel rooms. Yeah. So in the smaller panel room, it would have looked half full. Probably, <laughs> yeah. In the big panel room, it looked about a third full. Or mm-hmm. yeah. So that was I, I really that was probably my favorite panel uh, of, uh-huh. of of all the ones that I attended. You know, I knew he was going to be there, but I did not plan on. You know, like honestly, I I I thought that perhaps he would be so uh, inundated with fans that I I wouldn't be able to to have a chance unless I wanted to stand in, in a long line, and I that's I just right. didn't want to do that. Fortunately, <laughs> uh, because I went to that panel, so uh, they talked about many things. You know, kind of spanning his career. There, in fact, there was a comic book podcast who was there. Uh, they were they were hosting the Heroes Initiative booth. With Dave Gibbons, and they were the moderators for that particular panel, and they just released. And I, I should I should say who they are. Uh, the worst comic, I think it's the worst comic podcast ever is the name, or it's the worst comic book podcast ever. One of those two. I, I can't remember exactly, <laughs> but uh, but they they uh, I thought they were recording the panel, and that they would release it, um, and maybe they will. But the their, their most recent episode, I think it's episode one seventy if people want to go check it out is really just uh, them doing what we're doing right now, Damien talking about their experience at Rose city uh-huh. comic con, but also uh, containing an interview that they did with Dave Gibbons. So if anybody uh, who is listening to this uh, is interested in what Dave Gibbons, um, some of which he, some of some of the things he talked about during that panel, you will hear uh, maybe shortened versions of some of those things uh, in that particular episode so i encourage people to go take a listen to that but that like will i said you that was include a link to it then in your show notes i yes yes i okay. will um and uh, uh just the stories that he told just fascinating he told he told a couple stories about julius schwartz 
uh, one involving um, basically Julie Schwartz. So he was at some sort of party uh, with a bunch of DC folks there, and Julie Schwartz was there. And he, Schwartz came up to him and said, "Hey, uh, I want you to I want you to draw a Superman." You know, because Julie Schwartz was he was the the editor of the Superman line, and and so he he could he could make deals like this. He came up to Gibbons and said, "Hey, I want you to draw." Um, a uh, Superman book. And he's like, cool. Who's, who's going to write it? And he's like, well, who do you want to write it? And he's like, Hmm, I want Alan Moore to write it. And we get <laughs> that, that Superman annual, you know, uh, uh, the one where, um, uh, the black mercy shows up and, and, you know, it's just, it's just a, it's a, it's a fan favorite. It's critically, critically acclaimed, right. uh, uh, great story. I mean, they turned it into, uh, an episode on one of the justice league cartoons, right? Justice league unlimited or yeah. the justice league. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's a, it's yeah, great story. So he told that he also told this other story about how he was, uh, talking with Julie Schwartz and, uh, he wanted, he was made some comment about the comics that he did not have access to or didn't have in his collection. And Julia Schwartz is like, well, come here. And so Julia Schwartz took, took Dave Gibbons into his, uh, Schwartz's own collection of comics. These, all these file cabinets at, at the DC offices that he had, he's like, you know, take what you want. And, and so Gibbons was, was grabbing a bunch of comics and he's looking back at Schwartz, making sure, is it okay that I'm taking all these comics? He's like, yeah, you're going to. And then finally, <laughs> I guess apparently, uh, Mr. Gibbons had taken enough and, and Julius Schwartz was like, okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Great stories. Right. He told Julius Marie, Schwartz is probably the most famous DC editor of the sixties and seventies, I guess. I would, I would say so. I mean, he, he helped usher in the silver age. Right. So, right. um, uh, among other things. And, uh, uh, another thing that Dave Gibbons, uh, commented on, uh, they were talking about his collaborations with Alan Moore, uh, mm-hmm. Frank Miller, others. Right. And, uh, he, he, uh, compared Frank Miller to, uh, I have to look at my notes, make sure I get this right. Oh gosh, where is it? Oh yeah. Frank Miller to Miles Davis. And Alan Moore to Mozart. I thought that was an interesting <laughs> comparison is interesting. of the two. Uh, yeah, and he was nothing but complimentary. Um, yeah. I even uh, at one point uh, during the the beginning of the the panel, he had made comments about how uh, he approached Watchmen differently than he did uh, more science fiction type comics that he had done, and so that that immediately triggered something in my brain. And, uh, I, I formulated a question and at that point, that's when you were at the panel, uh, you had just arrived right before that. I gone up and when I, I arrived, you were standing alone, lone gunman at the uh, <laughs> microphone waiting to ask your question. Yeah. And I normally don't get up to ask questions, um, because mostly I just don't have anything good to contribute to the conversation. Uh-huh. Uh, but this time I, I really wanted to hear what he had to say about this. And so I asked him that, well, what, what, how exactly do you, did you approach Watchmen differently than say some of the other work? And, uh, I, I was so wrapped up in my own feelings about being up there talking to Mr. Gibbons. Cause I was, I was just like, I was basically gobsmacked. Um, right. I mean, my heart was beating, my heart was racing, you know, I didn't want to sound like a fool again, like I mentioned before, but here, you know, I was on mic talking to a comic book legend, asking him about his craft uh-huh. And he answered the question, Damien, but I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember now what he said. <laughs> I was so wrapped up in my own brain. I don't remember how he answered it. So I was hoping that maybe you, you, uh, did. <laughs> I can recall. Listen, I was listening and I'm trying to recall exactly how he answered it. I'm much stronger in my memory, I'm afraid, is when I arrived and I sat down with Gabby and uh, and we were watching the clock and going, poor Eric, is is he going to get to ask his question? Wait, because I was worried about that, too. Gibbons, whatever the previous issue was, Gibbons just kept going on and on about it and going off on tangents. And here you were standing, waiting, and the clock was ticking. And <laughs> And by the time your question was being answered, people were coming in for the next panel. We had stayed too long. Yeah. And the next panel was some cosplaying panel and all these cosplayers were coming in. 
And so I think I was so distracted by that. Um, <laughs> so Gabby and I were kind of having a lot of fun at the at the suspense of whether you would get to answer your question. <laughs> well, and, and she after I sat back down and she 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 leaned over to me and said, good question. Yeah. <laughs> I don't it know. It was that she... a good question. Well, so what was the answer? I, yeah. <laughs> I remember him talking about science fiction versus other things, but I just can't remember the specifics. Anymore. Yes, exactly. That's, that's so hopefully they will release a recording of the entire panel. That's what I was hoping they would do. So maybe they yeah. still will. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So, so that was the Dave Gibbons panel. And because of that, they had, ta- they had mentioned that they had, uh, I like comics had, had, uh, um, contributed a bunch of Watchmen hardcovers. So if you if you would go oh, down to the, to the comic book defense fund, the Heroes Initiative. Oh, Heroes Initiative. So yeah, if you would, if you went back down to the Heroes Initiative, Heroes Initiative booth, where Dave Gibbons would be signing uh, shortly after that panel, you could get you could get that. Well, because of the excitement of the moment, and uh, like I said, because I wasn't planning on, re- I did not think I was going to be able to even speak to Mister Gibbons, and. So not only did I get to ask him that question, but I decided to go down to the Heroes Initiative booth, get in line, and purchase a copy, uh, yet another copy of Watchmen, because <laughs> I have, <laughs> I have the original issues that were released when they were originally released. Right. I have a trade paperback. I have an absolute edition. Wow. Of it, and now I have this hardcover edition with <laughs> Mr. Gibbons' signature. But you know, it was really cool because I when I when I bought the book and I because he had a chair and according to the worst comic podcast ever, Mr. Gibbons asked to have the chair sitting in front of him so that people could sit, he could he could look at them in the eye and talk with them, uh, which wow. was really cool because yeah. most of the time for things like that you don't get that you know you're standing up there in front of them, they're right. sitting down writing writing their signature or whatever. And, and, you know, so I told him, I said, you, this is funny, Damien. So I, I said, I really enjoyed the stories you told about Julia Schwartz. He's like, oh, you were there. <laughs> Even though I was the last person to ask right. the question, he still didn't, you know, uh, put my we're face to the face. just part of the sea of faces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's fine. That's fine. No, I get it. Uh-huh. My feelings weren't hurt at all. Um, <laughs> they really weren't. But, uh, but anyway, so, but not only that, but he shook my hand. Uh-huh. Which I, you know, most most people that go to cons that are, you know, the ones behind the tables, they don't do that because right. of the <laughs> the con crud. So, um, well, that was amazing. Then you got not only did you get to ask a question, which you don't remember the answer to, but you did get to sit down face to face with one of the great heroes of comics. So yes. that that's a memorable. That's a great capper for your last day of the convention it really it really really was uh the rest of the day was you know we we spent i mean i went to the i went to a couple celebrity panels we went to the peter capaldi and pearl Mackey doctor who panel which is really fun but i i skipped out on that to go to the matt wagner panel how was that i wished i could have gone to that that was well you 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 know how we complain about some of the other ones being too focused this was running the gamut of matt wagner's work uh-huh. And how he approached, how he's how he's approaching, uh, Mage at because it you know he's 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 done these three different volumes now at three different stages in his life and basically he said, uh, he couldn't have done the third volume earlier because of the way that he's constructed the character and where that character is in his life, and and he wanted he wanted to have kids and and kids at a certain age to relate in some fashion to what he's doing in the stories uh, that he's doing now. So right. that was interesting to know. And, the, you know, he, and he just, he told a lot of interesting stories about how he does things and, and uh, how things got produced. And so that was a really interesting panel. I, I really mm-hmm. wish you'd been there. For yeah. That one. Did he talk about the fact that for a long time now, he's been mostly a writer? No. No, so I wondered don't. what what it's like to get back into being a writer artist after it seems ah. to me from the work I've seen by by him maybe the last ten or fifteen years is mostly writing. Mm-hmm. Um, he so does a lot of writing, for, a lot of writing for Dynamite, and you know, doing a lot of their pulp heroes and things like that. Mm-hmm. 
and I think he did a lot of writing for DC before that um, with less and less art by him. Right, right. Yeah, so Sunday was kind of hard. My daughter was sick and there was something else going on that my I think my wife needed to go to. So anyway, I had to I had very limited time there. So after the Gibbons Gibbons after after Dave Gibbon Gibbons, I went to this panel that was about inking. But what it really was was about uh interviewing or it involved a couple of different people, but it was was that that British uh, college professor again, who's from Portland State University. But this time he was talking with the guy who edits the um, the IDW um, artist editions, and they were talking all about the lore of inking and which inkers, you know, were considered best, say on Jack Kirby, and they were apparently just as I arrived, they just finished talking about Wally Wood who's mm-hmm. famous both for his inking and his art in general. So I wish I could have heard that part too, but of course that w- then I would have missed the little bit of given givens that I did get. So, um, but I thought that was a fascinating panel and I hope the name of the guy who does it is Scott Dunbeer or Scott Dunbar. Um, and I just thought he was really interesting. And, and I, as you may or may not realize, I have bought about 10 of these artist editions now. Wow. Talk about, you know, spending a lot of money on what you really want. <laughs> yeah. I haven't yeah. regretted a single one. Um, they're yeah. very expensive, but but I just love them. So that was kind of a highlight panel for me, which I caught half of. Well, and that, that was a panel that I wanted to go to, but because of the whole go get in line at the Heroes Initiative booth and, and, right. get, and talk to Dave Gibbons, I missed it. Yeah. It wasn't totally clear what the panel was going to be about, but it turned out to be really, really interesting. Mm-hmm. So then I then I went back down. I had to pick up the commission from Matt, and I really um, really liked what he had done. It was completely different what I than what I had imagined, but totally in his style and and really beautiful. And then I um, wandered around a bit more, wanting to buy a few more prints, and I stumbled across the Neil Adams booth, which I don't know if you saw that this time. I did. It must have been four booths. The space of four or five booths. It was huge. Devoted. It was enormous, and it had tables and tables with prints by him. And I, I really did want a a Neil Adams print. And there he was sitting around waiting, because he's either he'll sign, he'll charge you for a signature, or he'll sign a print that you buy from him for free. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I ended up buying a sketchbook, and a small print, and a large print. Wow. And just as I went up to pay for them, Neil Adams left. Oh, no. And he was off to do a panel. And they said, well, when you get come back when he's back from the panel and he'll sign these for you. But I had to go home, take care of my sick daughter. Oh, Damien. So I bought them anyway. <laughs> didn't get the signature. And I'm not a big fan of signatures, but I'm a huge fan of Neil Adams. And it would have been my chance because no one else was around to maybe chat with him a little bit. And uh, perhaps get over my shyness with the more famous artist. But... <laughs> I have heard Neil Adams talk like I've been in comic book stores where he was doing signings before. Um, and he's a bit curmudgeonly. So I don't know, you know, what what I would have gotten out of it anyway. Yeah. But but it was my chance to you know be alone with Neil Adams for a few minutes. Yeah, I I was I was actually surprised that he wasn't swamped with people. Every time I'd walk by, there weren't that many people around. So I'm not right. sure if it. If I just, you know, I just miss those times. I know amongst people on on YouTube, he has kind of a reputation of charging huge amounts of money and stuff and not being so friendly. So maybe less people are going. Now, I at first thought this was just I saw a little table with him sitting at and I thought that was it. And I didn't want to buy a a fifteen hundred dollar commission sketch from him. (laughs) And I didn't want him to pay for him to sign a comic book. But then so I started to just walk on and then i saw the huge swath of prints and i am interested in getting prints especially if they're kind of unique so i picked out ones that i didn't think were the more common covers by him and, and mm-hmm. such and i and i have always wanted to own neil adams sketchbooks too well i'm looking forward to your video showing all this stuff off now yeah yeah so i will i i i'm actually waiting for a little piece of equipment to help me do that i i hope it'll make it a little easier to film these things. But, and then I, um, 
Yeah. So, but the the highlight of the convention really was hanging out with you, having your family over to the house. Um, so, I whoops. I hope that part happens again next year, and uh, hopefully our our granddaughters and daughters can still get along and and hang out with each other more. Yeah. So how did it, how did everything wrap up for you then? Well, after after that, we uh, I, like I said, we we went to the Doctor Who panel, and we we I did go to the uh, I, uh, I missed the first part of it, but I did after I did some shopping, did some more shopping, some comic book shopping, uh, where I got uh, I mentioned this before, but I got some sets, some other sets for half off and some other things. Um, and again, I, I go over I go over this stuff in the video that I did, but uh, we went to see William Shatner. I thought. You know, I've seen Shatner before, oh, you have. but like I said, he's getting up there in age. And so I thought, oh, it'd be, it'd be kind of fun. And after a while it was, it was a lot of fun. There was one point, just, just this particular thing I'll, I'll mention, but <laughs> some guy gets up there to ask Shatner a question and he goes, okay, we'd like you to, to, um, put to bed the eternal question, Star Wars or Star Trek. <laughs> and, uh, and Shatner's like, you're not serious, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, okay. So, you know, he, him and Haas about it. And she's basically giving the guy a bad time. He's like, well, do you want to be a child or do you want to be uh, an adult <laughs> about <laughs> your, answer. your fandom? So I thought that was kind of fun, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, after that, it was just mostly just kind of walking around buying some stuff. I did, I did, uh, uh, one point during the weekend, I, I had seen some art by this artist named Todd Rayner and he's an, he's a, an independent comic book publisher, uh, or, you know, he, he does it, he does his own comic a self publisher, self publisher. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, there he, he's, he did, uh, in fact, I found out later he, uh, for Rose city comic con, he had published the first issue of a book called ice pick. And so I went back. That was one of the last things that I did. One of the last purchases I made was to go back and buy this comic. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to looking at that again. I, I show this in the video, but other than that, we, yeah, we just, we were on the show floor. The very last part of it, Madison really wanted to go to the, uh, the, uh, where the video games were, where you could play all the classic video games, the oh, consoles really? and whatnot. So we spent a good 20 minutes there, maybe 30 minutes there. And then basically the con ended and we left. And, uh, the only other thing I want to, I wanted to mention is so on the way, as we're walking away from the con, Having having had a great weekend, uh, made even better by spending time with you and your family. That was a, a that was a really uh, lovely highlight, uh, Damien. So you know, thank you again, and make sure you, uh, if you don't mind, tell your wife and daughter that we had a great time with them. I will. <laughs> um, uh, but as we were walking walking away from the convention center on our way to get some dinner, and then collapse at the hotel <laughs> before we had to drive back the next day. The Rose City Comic Con Twitter account had put out something uh, about the end of the con, but it was uh, it was mentioning that that the comics industry had lost Len Wein, the uh, the the great longtime DC writer and editor, had passed, and uh, also a major figure in the Marvel history too. Oh, that's that's very true. Um, yeah, it's just what a what a letdown from 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 a great Comic Con. To you know, losing one of one of the greats like Len Wein, right, right. You know, my my experience with Len Wein really has to do with the New Teen Titans. You know, him being editor there, uh, but you know, he worked on a lot of things. He was editor on not only New Teen Titans but Watchmen, Who's Who, uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. He he uh, wrote uh, a bunch of stuff that I have. Let's see, there, there's a couple things I just want to mention. He uh, wrote. Uh, Teen Titans number 18, the original Teen Titans number 18, which uh, featured the, the Russian Starfire, uh, uh -huh. which was then brought back in the new Teen Titans issue number 18 by Marv Wolfman and George Perez. So, you know, there's that connection. And he uh, he also wrote, I think was my first miniseries that I ever bought, which was The Untold Legend of the Batman, uh -huh. which uh, uh, was... You know, I hadn't really read a lot of Batman comics up to that point, and and I get this this mini series that kind of it was kind of an overview of of certain elements of of Batman in general, and so I got this great introduction to 
the char- the Batman characters through this miniseries that Lynn Wein had written. Right. So he was the editor of the Watchmen. Mm-hmm. He was the creator of Swamp Thing. Uh, of course. And the creator of Wolverine. Yep. Yep. And the creator of the new X-Men, you know, the X-Men that are now the main That's right. X-Men. Yeah. And those are just the top of the top of his list. You yeah. Because he did so many things. Exactly. When I was a kid in the 70s reading Marvel Comics, he was writing everything, you know, at different times. Mm-hmm. Um, he was he and Jerry Conway and Roy Thomas were the major writers at Marvel. That's, at that's that true. Yeah. And I guess like like Marv Wolfman, he moved over to D.C. and then and he and Marv Wolfman just left him more editorially, but left a huge mark on D.C. during yeah. the 80s. Yeah. And uh, they recently had him come back and write a Swamp Thing miniseries. Mini that series, was a that's lot right. of fun. It was very different from modern Swamp <laughs> Thing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I was looking forward to him doing more. Um mm-hmm. More things like that come back and write different things. Yeah. And uh, he was 69, I believe, which isn't okay. too young, but a lot of people live a lot older than that nowadays. Yes. So it's, uh, yeah. Well, you know, as as uh, you and I age, have, have you know, being long, <laughs> long time comic book fans, yeah. you know, it's it's we're just going to get more of this. You know, those, those oh, yeah. people that we grew yeah. up reading. Back in back in the seventies and eighties, you know, they're right. They they were older than they're older than us, yeah, uh, to to a large degree. Yeah. So, you know, Rich I Buckler died recently, and he was a huge part of my seventies. Yeah, such a great both artist. at Marvel and DC. Yeah, so we're just going to get more and more of this. So it's going to yeah, it's going to start getting depressing in comics. Yeah, <laughs> from from that perspective. But well, you know what? Older people, I mean, older than us, but of our parents' age. Um, complain about a lot is your friends all start dying and, yes you know this is the first thing is the uh the creators of your youth start dying and then eventually your friends start dying but yeah old age is not fun no, no in that not. sense <laughs> wow what a, what a downer to what a way conversation to end. <laughs> uh, i'm a happier uh, person as an older person than as i was as a younger person that's so, true. I, that. so am i so am i and and in large part to uh my involvement in comic books so not only are they a great source of entertainment for uh-huh. me personally but then now i you know uh, uh i go to comic cons now i've met great people like yourself because right. of this association with comic books uh so yeah it's it, my yeah. my as i enter my my waning years i'm i'm much much happier <laughs> um in my relation to to comic books and everything that entails so my dad, who didn't want to allow me to read comics, didn't want me to read science fiction, thought that rock and roll was melting my brain, <laughs> now says, you won to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. And, uh, you know, here I am in my 50s meeting people, you know, at uh, various ages, but many of them around my age range, um, who are mature adults who like all of the stuff I like. You know, not failures in life, living in gutters somewhere. Or <laughs> the meek have in, have in, inherited the earth, right? right. That's, how, that's how that saying goes. Yeah. Well, my father's opinion, the crass have inherited the earth. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, he was definitely part of that uh, Wortham generation that believed oh. he was he was raised believing that you you would rot your brain reading comics, especially mm-hmm. as you got older. Mm-hmm. Um so, but now he has to admit that my side won. <laughs> yeah, good. That's good. That's probably a good way to end the end the conversation. Yeah, there we go. Too, uh, well. And uh, I will be going to Emerald City next year. Hopefully, you'll be able to go. Oh, you are planning on going to it? Oh, sorry, I said Emerald City. Uh, I don't know about Emerald City yet. Okay, but Rose oh, City. Definitely going to Rose City next year. Um, okay. And I will be going to. Anyone else living in the Northwest, there's a new con called I Like Comic Con, which I'll be trying out. It's in Vancouver, Washington, which is right across the river from Portland. Right. And that's February uh, of 20. That's in February. This this February I, in the 18th, I'm going to definitely, I'm definitely going to try and get yeah. to that one. It depends on, depends on the pass. I, I was just I thinking can, that the weather could have a huge. Yeah. Well, not, no, wait, that's Seattle. I'm thinking Seattle. No, no, no. Um, uh, yeah. It just depends on. On the on the, on the weather conditions, but yeah, I I really want to go to that one. Yeah, 
And that one advertises itself as only being about comics. Yes. So that'll be interesting to see how well that goes. Yeah. I like comics as a great store. They're putting on their own con. So, and the focus is on comic books. I, that just seems yeah. like a win to me. Yes. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm sure it'll be fun. Okay. Yeah. Let's wrap up. Why don't you tell people, uh, uh, where they can find you again on, on YouTube and, and, uh, we'll get out of here. Yeah. Um, as I said before, uh, you can find me just by searching for sleepy reader, six, 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 all one word on YouTube. That's the name of my YouTube channel. And, um, as has been pointed out, I'm fairly prolific there. <laughs> uh, I think I have 400 videos maybe. Wow. <laughs> Over a five-year period, <laughs> I think I have a tenth of that. <laughs> a lot of it is a lot of it is just like a weekly haul kind of thing, but there is some evergreen material in the mix there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've made some playlists, I think, of of the more interesting stuff. Okay, well, thank you, Damien. I appreciate you coming on and talking uh, about Rose City Comic Con with me. Always a pleasure. To As be always with me too. On the podcast. Yeah. Uh, and so if people have any comments about, uh, our conversation about Rose City Comic Con, if you were there, especially, I would love to hear people, um, uh, what, what your thoughts were about the show. I, uh, you can do so by emailing me at longboxreview at gmail.com, uh, or you can uh, message me on Twitter at longboxreview, all one word, uh, or you can even go to the website longboxreview.com and leave comments there. So uh, thank you very much for listening, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.